Okay, we on the backup channel. Lost what? in the script. <laughs> Two. Backup channel. What up, George? You the only one in here. What's up, man? Man, fuck George. <laughs> George said, ooh, man, this garbage again. Man, I like the song. I don't care what you say. Is it even equal to Immortal Technique or even Cool Keith or even Kobe Rhino? It don't have to be equal. Different different stuff for different folks. I want to say fuck YouTube. Damn, can I? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> What's up to the most <laughs> honorable and reliable dude? That busters that don't re do research are going to comment and whack, um, whack rap the former person named Travis that will be hating on cute Filipino bunnies. <laughs> okay, Rhino. All right. Got to hit again, YouTube, because we did a clip on from Twitter of the dude talking about, you know, the jab and stuff. But it is what it is. Yeah, know. every time we get banned, it's because of you. <laughs> every time we get banned, it's because we watch a video of a white dude talking. Well, stop about, and start having white dudes talk. <laughs> I ain't doing no more. Anyway, man, to anybody who watches this now or after the fact, thank you for watching. Glad you come in. Please like, share, <laughs> <laughs> like, comment, and share and subscribe. We gotta make sure we gotta actually, uh, for once, push the second gun channel. We don't even talk about the second. You gotta channel give George his ranch on this channel. He don't got it. We don't even talk about the second channel until we get uh, suspended Bang. from the original. So people don't know about it. Yeah, so we gotta talk about it more. Oh, there's different type of moderators now. You got managing moderator and a standard moderator. Hmm. All right, we're going to get right into it. We ain't, I ain't got no slide. It's going to be a quick show. We just want to get something out, honestly. Okay, Judge Greg Mathis finds new home with Allen Media Group. You said he was going to... No, you said the Grio, but I'm giving you credit. You at least brought up Brian Allen's company. Boulets always laying. <laughs> they like a cat. They got nine <laughs> lives and they always laying on their feet. You smoke crack, don't you? You gonna call you call people crackhead on another channel now? You damn right. New court scene. New, uh, new court series. Mathis Court with Judge Mathis will premiere in fall of twenty twenty three. I mean, he was negotiating this deal. He knew he was about before, to go yeah. off air, and he had already had negotiations that this was where he was gonna go. So he knew he was going. Well, let me say this. I'm gonna just, at least he went to another black. I'm saying, isn't this isn't this part of the point where you need black owned things? It just it angers me with if Judge Mathis, let's say this show goes on Alley Media Group and does well, the numbers increase tenfold what the company's used to as far as viewership. How quickly will he go back to one of those other networks? Oh, he's not going back. I'm saying if his show just somehow whatever reason blew up on whatever network he's on owned by J Allen Media Group. It just it does more views than any show that's ever done on there. It's getting millions of views weekly. How quickly before when that contract ends with them, when one of those other white networks come and offer him money, how quickly will he leave? I believe quickly. I don't think he's gonna leave. I, I think he would if that situation came up. I can't say I agree with that. I do because they do it all the time. Who? Everybody in those positions who are able to build himself up. Name in a, black, a show. A show. Well, I can't name a show. Exactly. Because shows, they don't, they don't happen to black shows. Black shows are used to build up a network and then thrown to the side. I'm talking about a show blowing up on a black network and then being offered money from another. You've never seen it, so you can't have an opinion on it. <sighs> That's why I was given a hypothetical situation, but okay. We'll just kill it. We'll just, on, stop kill having it. opinions on things that you don't, that you've it's never seen a discussion before. That could be inter interesting and entertaining. Well, it's being negative. How is it negative? <laughs> Okay. You being negative. But didn't we just get to talk shit about Deion Sanders for having success at Jackson State, Jackson State and deciding to leave and go to a PWI? And that's what I'm talking about. That's just, you can't compare that How? to a black. That's a black institution. Network. Black institution. Both will be black owned and ran. Well, hey, if you want to be negative, be negative. Oh, now I'm the negative one. All right. Court is back oh, in session. Oh, y'all catch that? What? Oh, now I'm the negative one? So so now, said, no, 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 no. I said no, no, now I'm no, being no. negative. No, you already said what you had to say. You Court got it off your chest. session for Judge Matt, uh, Greg Mathis and the TV personality has found a home in the Alley Media Group. 
the Baron Allen owned uh, media giant has given a firm go for the production of launches in the 72nd and newest HD television series, Mathis court um, and judge Mathis. <laughs> the new court series is daily one hour strip from fall uh, for fall 2023 available to broadcast television stations, as well as global network cable and digital distribution. Platforms. Judge Mathis ain't going to be in there for long. He didn't want to be on the other net. Did you watch his last season? <laughs> a couple of seasons, motherfucker just been going there, showing up to get a check, yeah. leaning back in a damn chair and all that. Judge Mathis don't really want to do this, but yeah. it's a, that's a bad way answer. of having revenue. So it's yeah. a job at this point. You're right. He already got the profile. He still get to call people crackheads. So it's a win-win situation for him. I remember Corey Hogan told the story about it. Don't go there with no child support. Hey, you losing. You coming there with child support. <laughs> judge don't play with you. I remember when Corey told a, uh, a story about him. Said he was at the club one time. and said Judge Mathis walked in the club and went to the DJ booth. He said let everybody know Judge Mathis in here. He's like you're so lame. <laughs> <laughs> that ain't a lame. It is. You, he fact, you got to tell the whole club you in there so you can get some some love from them to try and get the. No, he just let them know. You know the women in there. Let them know Judge Mathis. Is just here. the women. All right, let's move on. There you Net- go. <laughs> Netflix shares. Throwing out accusations. Netflix shares. My name is Monique. First look reveals April to premiere date. Netflix shares my name is Monique. First look reveals April premiere date. Uh, Monique is back, baby. The Oscar winning actress is giving fans a first look at her upcoming Netflix stand up special. My name is Monique. On Wednesday, the streamer uh, released a video to him um, taking fans behind the scenes of the original comedy special. Let me just show the clip. Um, you gonna get flagged, is it? No, because I'm not okay. gonna show the whole thing. I'm learning. I'm learning. <laughs> Fuck what they said. I told you Netflix would come around. Ah! Ready? In five. I don't know why. This shit is called My Name is Monique. (laughs) Y'all might say, damn, we didn't know we was going to find out all of that. Yes. My name is Monique. Now, when the second you saw this, what was your first reaction? I remember you, the first thing you said was, "Every comedian is now going into the whole Dave Chappelle spiel." It's not Dave Chappelle though. It was done. Long, it was done by Richard Pryor. It was I'm done by saying, George he, Carlin. He, it was done by Eddie Murphy. All the has, great, Chris Rock. All the great comedians. He has some, started a trend in this era of this is what they do now. No, no, no. Most comedians do this as they get older. Okay. Your early comedy is fart jokes, situation funny. Then it's marriage and kids. Well, then uh, it's life and society. Then it's <laughs> critique of society and life. Monique is coming off a high with her successful movie, uh, The Reading. <laughs> the what? She's coming off a high with the successful movie, The Reading. The Reading. That shit was <laughs> terrible, bro. I thought it was a good... I liked it. It the wasn't bad was, to me. The Reading was one of those movies where it's so bad it's, it's entertaining. It's better than some stuff I've seen, so I'll just leave it at that. And the writing, like, we could go into a review of that movie. But I'm just... We're going to bring back the movie... Lost in the movies uh, series at some point because the writing in that movie could have been good. They just decided halfway through the movie, just forget, <laughs> forget the, uh, the ghost and the spiritual side of the damn movie. Let's just go to the, to this. It definitely could have used more supernatural stuff in the movie. They just left it. I'm just hoping that her, uh, stand up is good. Her stand up is good because of all this stuff that's, you know, been going on over the past couple of years. The whole thing that happened with her and uh, uh, D.L. Hughley. Yeah. The stuff Corey Hogan, Hogan said about her. Yeah. So I just hope that the uh, special is good. Let me see. I think it's hard to have a bad special when you're doing an introspective special. It's like you're basically telling your life story. You're That's telling funny moments do. that happen in your life. It's kind of guaranteed, especially if it's your first time doing it. It's guaranteed to get people to go, oh, man, I never do that. Oh, that was a funny moment. It's kind of, and it's over an hour. Yeah. I, this stand up, you're not going to get the. Uh, Skinny bitches, fat yeah. bitches stuff. Well, you might get that, but you'll yeah, probably get bit. it. From, you'll probably get it from perspective of why she said those things, what was really going on in her life, and funny moments that made the irony of it. But know, uh, I'm, I'm rooting for Monique, and I hope it does well. <laughs> Me too. I hope the numbers do well on Netflix. Oh man, they're gonna look on looking them numbers. Netflix I, gonna look at them numbers too. For some reason, I think they're gonna do well. I think be, I think it's guaranteed to do a certain number just because of oh she finally got one. Yeah, the controversy is automatically. People are going to look at it to say, is it funny? You have the haters and the people that's rooting for her that's going to come and watch it. Just to see if it's funny or not. And then that'll automatically give you the numbers you want just from people wanting to say it's bad. So even yeah. if it's bad, people are going to watch it to say it's bad. So you're going to get numbers automatically. But yeah. But when I'm, we're not wishing the bad thing. We're hoping that it's successful and it does well. I do. I do. I do. 
Shout out to Mo. <laughs> Academy adds Oscars crisis team. I know we ain't talking about this shit still. I'm just, I'm just reading the headline. Okay. Calm down. I'm, I'm saying this because of the Monique situation. I'm, I'm saying how they make rules. And I, I'll get to it. Academy adds Oscar crisis team after Will Smith slap. We'll be prepared for anything we may not anticipate. So now they're saying because Will Smith went up there and slapped them, they didn't know what to do. They're going to have a crisis team, which means security, basically, in case something happens, which means more than likely you'll see a situation where the person who's hosting the event won't be as uh, close, intimate with the crowd. They'll probably elevate the stage and away from the crowd a little bit, and they'll have security. So now they're making it seem like, oh, this, it's just a threat against the host, which I guess they have to do that as the company, and you're hiring somebody. You have to make sure it's called they're protected. Corrective action. Yeah, so Chris Rock could have easily sued the Oscars and said, you put me in a situation where I wasn't protected, but he didn't, obviously. He just went on a tour <laughs> with the Will Smith thing. Made, made more money in his uh, comedy career in a long time. Tickets went from like $50 to like 600 but you know. Here you go, shitting on the black man. Truth is true. I'm just saying it's funny how they added this after the fact. It's, it's just, just like, theatrics. They made him do that slave movie and he still didn't get one. But anyway. Explainer. Egypt cancels Kevin Hart's show after black Egyptians reference. Hart was criticized on Egyptian social media for comments he alleged, allegedly made asserting that ancient Egyptians were black. <sighs> Look, man, we're in 2023. I don't even debate this. At this point, you can't debate this stuff with anybody anymore. There's books, there's the paintings, there's pictures, there's all type of art done. There's no reason to debate people on the history of black people anymore. We know that the Egyptians, the people they call Egyptians now are migrants, not even migrants. They're invaders. They were, I'm, I'm going to say it like this. Northern and Western, Northern and Eastern Africa didn't look like that a thousand years ago. It didn't look like that 500 years ago. <laughs> it didn't look like that. But anyway, what are your thoughts on Kevin Hart losing a show in Egypt? My thoughts are, um, I don't <laughs> fuck with Kevin Hart. But um, no, forget the comedy part. <laughs> I'm talking about the part of them being angry at his assertion that because, well, if like. they believe that they are the real Egyptians, they are going to be offended by his comment. So you're saying it, it is what it is. Basically. It is what it is. You can't be saying shit like that. You want to go to another country and want them to sell out your but show. It, I, I guess if I was someone with a platform that had 10, 30 million followers and I said, hey, you know, the Jews, you know, the real Jews are black. I shouldn't expect to go do a comedy show in Israel. Exactly. Yeah, I guess. Okay. All right. So <laughs> you won't say that shit no more. I guarantee you. I mean, at this point, he may as well. He already lost the show. Yeah. Uh, Travis Masson. <laughs> George ain't talking shit. Oh, how you doing, Regina? Oh, Regina showed up. Hey, how you doing? Uh, hey, guys, we <laughs> don't get noticed today. For the first time, Dag Nabbit, YouTube suckers. Uh, <laughs> Grand Rising, North Carolina brothers in chat. Yeah, yeah, you know, it is what it is. They, they got rid of us for the next two weeks. They almost got out. We got two strikes, by the way. <laughs> we got to calm down until about... Uh, March 6th, and we we can, you know... March kinda, 6th, that's when we come back? No, we come back March... That's on the Monday. March 6th is the Monday. We'll come back that Saturday. So it'll be two episodes oh. only. So we'll be able to upload uh, these episodes during the week of that. So hopefully everything goes well. <laughs> Monique ain't acting. That's what the uh, reading revealed to me. <laughs> and uh, and like Duke said, you can't deny who the original people are for corners of the earth. Exactly. That's I agree I, with that. But. I don't debate it anymore. It's like I stopped debating on the internet like a while ago because you realize you're not going to change people's minds and it's, it's pointless. It's fruitless. I, I, like I saw, uh, there was a post made recently. I'm not going to say the name of the podcast. It was a podcast where a debate came up about pro-blackness and it was debating what pro-blackness was. And I went to the clip of that video and I left a comment and I got two comments that disagreed with me and I, I was going to go back and forth with them. What did you say? I said I define what pro blackness is versus being conscious. There's a difference. Okay, that's what she said. I said there's a difference between being conscious, which is knowing what's going on around the world, black people, the technology that's going on, versus being pro black, which is an action and an ideology where you do anything that benefits your people, and if it doesn't, you don't do it. So that determines who you marry, 
who you do business with, where you live, everything. That's pro black. And what was their response? That's only on the internet. And I, I, I my head hurt. Like I said Malcolm X is only on the internet. Like there's a reason why even Martin Luther King, who you can say what he did behind the scenes, the reason why he married the woman he married, <laughs> lived where he lived, the reason why he a pat, all those things are decisions politically. It was a setting example. Same thing with Obama. He married Michelle for a reason. It's political who you marry. And I'm thinking the fact that he thinks that's just an internet thing, I can't even debate it. So I deleted my con. I don't. I said I can't debate with these people. I can't go back. I learned that years ago. I can't go back to somebody who hasn't learned that <laughs> and try to debate them. It's just it's pointless. Hmm. So I, don't, I just don't debate no more. But anyway, yeah, Monique. I think Monique can act. She just gotta. She gotta pick up. She gotta pick better movies. Honestly, I think she's gotta pick better movies. Um, Uma was born on the internet. Even his white school. <laughs> the school is physical. What are you talking about? It's brick and mortar. What are y'all talking about? What you talk about, Joy? Why would why would uh so Umar Johnson is opening up a school for young black men and George is calling it whack. <laughs> See, that's what happens when you raised around a bunch of white people. Oh, here you go. Oh, I just realized this is your backup going page. Again, YouTube uh, sap suckers and old fish eyed fools. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, they yeah. got us, Regina. They got us. It'll be all right, though. Well, I'm thinking about um, putting it on a spot. I'm not spot, not spot, uh, SoundCloud. Doing something like that with the audio. I've seen people bring up Rumble. <laughs> we might, might do that. I don't know yet. Anyway. And here we go. Don Lemon's co-workers trash him over his colossal ego. As calls for CNN this morning star to be fired, grow. Why couldn't they just say big? I mean, you need to you need to add stuff in the in the, in the uh, title to get people to want to click and read. That's basic journalism, Travis. They call it clickbait on YouTube. It's basically just get people to click, to get people to watch, to listen, read. Do be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Don Lemon got in some trouble when he said that the lady was uh, out of her prime. I'm talking about Nikki Haley. I think that's her name, Nikki Haley. Uh, it says she was out of her prime. She's what, 50 something years old. And she's a Republican. Don running, said what he said. She's a Republican running for president. And she he angered a lot of people saying it was sexist comments to say a woman was out of her um, prime to be. I, I, a lot of people didn't understand what he meant. Are you saying she's out of her prime to be able to be president? Or are you making a joke about her out of her prime as a woman? Which I could say as a as a person who's a. Um, a host on a network you, that's probably inappropriate to say um but i don't really understand the political component to that all when, the inappropriate things that done said about trump and everybody else that's inappropriate to say i said those things were inappropriate too calling him orange man and all that well the network didn't have a problem with that being said on live about him so what's the big deal now i'm not saying it's a big deal i'm just saying from the standpoint of being professional i can see why that would be a big deal but they destroy professionalism under Trump. I agree. You don't get to be professional when you want to be professional. I agree. I agree. So he said that. made his, So now the co-host saying that he's, he got an ego. They want to get rid of him. They took him off the Monday show. But obviously, they brought him back at this point. Uh, <laughs> I thought Don Lynn was about to get his nigga wake-up call, but I forgot he's a part of that community. Don so. said, fuck around and find out he'd be on Fox. <laughs> <He's> a, <laughs> we said that, too. If he would have got fired, I would not have been surprised. Fuck around. He'd be on up. Fox. Uh, CNN's down limit to receive formal training at the Nikki Haley prime comment. What's the training? Anchor down limit will return to work Wednesday after he receives formal training for his comments about Republican president candidate Nikki Haley on CNN this morning. A uh, limit has not been. Well, Mind you, this is this is CNN getting offended about him talking about a Republican re candidate, Republican but she's candidate. a woman. So that's that lets you know what the era that we are in. But th let's talk about it. Let's talk really go through it. So a black black quote unquote gay man made I'm sorry a black gay liberal man on CNN a liberal network made comments about a Indian Republican woman and it's like a lot of it's like a lot of stuff going on remember this is a side that believe in this idea of intersectionality so she her uh, his privilege quote unquote as a man even though he's in, being black and gay as well is under I mean, is over her privilege of being a quote unquote woman of color. You notice why they allow him to get dragged a little bit through this. 
if this if this was comments made about who's the white woman they don't like, uh, what's the woman that um, uh, uh, what's the woman name? <laughs> the one out of Alaska? No, 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 I heard uh, her too, her too. The one, Carrie Lake, even though people think she's something, I don't know. If he says about Carrie Lake, they wouldn't care. Oh, she's a uh, election denier. Exactly. So it's, it depends who the person is, and also, oh, it's another point. They want Nikki Haley to go against Trump. She's against Trump. Oh, okay. Nikki Haley's against Trump. That's why they are defending her from these comments because they want to give her a shot to be the candidate for the Republicans for presidency. She's not going to win. She's not going to win at all. Uh, but yeah, they say he's going to get formal training. Lehman has <laughs> has not been on air since Thursday when during the discussion scene they hosted morning about the age of politicians. He said that the 40, 51-year-old Haley was not in her prime, a woman, he said, was considered in her prime in her 20s, 30s, and maybe her 40s. I sat down with Don and had a frank and meaningful conversation. Lynch wrote in memo, he has agreed to participate in formal training as well as continuing to listen and learn. We take the situation very uh, seriously, CNN Business reported. So obviously he ended up being back. He tweeted another apology and returned to work. But I still don't think they want him there no more. So how long do you think he lasts? Maybe another year. I think he might resign. He'll he'll be fired. They're going to give him his resignation papers. But I think he might lead the position... In about six months. Maybe. So Don Lemon, <laughs> we'll see where he end up. He'll be on the grill too. Let's see if he can make lemons. <laughs> make lemonade make out of lemonade. lemonade. It's Don Lamone, ain't it? And he's and he from uh he's from South Carolina. Is he from He from uh he's Creole, ain't he? So he's Lamone, ain't it? His name is Don, Don Lemon. Lemon. I've always said Don Lemon. Anyway. Georgia woman crashes SUV into Popeye's after her order was missing biscuits, authorities say. I'm not even going to read really the article. talking about this shit. I'm, I'm not reading the article. I just think it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> Popeye's is known for having what type of biscuits? What was the race of the woman? What does it matter? What was the race of the woman? What does it matter? So you chose this article <laughs> because it was a black woman. I don't know if it's a black woman. Okay. It says the woman identified as 50-year-old Belinda Miller. Of Augusta is charged with felony or aggravated assault and criminal damages to property in the first degree. She wait, she, wait a minute. She crashed her SUV into them over them dry ass biscuits. That's the point because she didn't have no biscuits. You know what? Ever since COVID, it's crazy. motherfuckers have gone crazy. <laughs> and customer, people, you know, it's so many videos of uh, these customers coming into restaurants yeah. and just flipping out on the staff. But the, luckily, the Waffle House, they ready. Oh, Waffle House will beat your ass. Waffle House don't. Waffle House don't I play. think um, Waffle House need to hold a seminar on how to uh, handle how, how, to, how to defend unruly customers. <laughs> customers. Now that's a training. <laughs> Travis call him Doctor Umar. Put some respect on uh, that fake doctor named Buster. <laughs> I got Travis Shook calling that the fame man Umar. Uh, Travis be knowing. His name is Dr. Umar. Well, his real name is, uh, he changed his name, right? Infante, Infante, I forgot how you say his name, his last name. I go by, what's on your uh, birth certificate? Well, he go by Johnson, obviously, his legal name, but he changed his name, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Whatever it say on his birth certificate, that's what we go by. Carl Jr.'s biscuits is dry, Travis, but He's talking about Hardee's. Yeah. It, uh, they call, yeah that's in the Carl's. West Coast, it's called Carl Jr., but you know, in the South, it's called Hardee's. It's called, I, I disagree with that. Biscuits is dry, Travis, but you love them. They're so white, fluffy, and dry. <laughs> I like uh, Hardy's biscuits. <laughs> I've said if Nikki Haley is in her prime, then what is Joe Biden underworld does? <laughs> Joe <laughs> underworld does. <laughs> Dust the ass. He going to just disappear into the wind, ain't he? Well, shit, we don't even know if, if Biden is here or there. So I I do believe that should be an age limit for a presidency, though. I don't think you should be allowed to be over the age of 65. The same age that the um, civilians have to can retire, that's the same age you cannot be a politician. The anymore. age you start drawing your Social Security you is the age president. you can't run. For presidency. I think 65 should be the cutoff to be able to run for president. So if you 62, uh, you, you can you might can slip in, but anything past that, you can't you can't even run. Because you'll be in the presidency too long. That's yeah. what I believe. Joe Biden, old reptile ass. Man, the dude walking around face, here. His, let, somebody, <laughs> let somebody iron his face and put it on. You see how he went and got that surgery before he ran for president. And you could tell they just pulled his face back yeah, so much. Kamala did the same thing too. She did too. She, she had to pull some other stuff. <laughs> Tighten some other stuff up too. <laughs> <Them> surgery. <curtains. laughs> he had to draw them curtains back. 
she had to tighten another area up before she, you know, she got to do, out and do more missions because she's the vice president now. So yeah, they she had, had to, they had to tighten some other. You know they got them up. things for your jaw. You can you can chew to make your jaw <laughs> muscles stronger. <laughs> oh, Travis is correct. Mofos have gone crazy since the candy jab. Crazy, them babies got bigger too. Have y'all seen them babies? We talked about that a little while ago. These babies Keep are not on here. Oh no, she, not. <laughs> She's, well, she, she agreed she, to it though. She agreed to it. Yeah. All right, let's uh, let's move on. Yeah, Nikki Haley. Uh, they ain't having babies. They having toddlers. <laughs> yeah, there's some big babies. Yeah, like how the cats be running around looking like little cubs. That's how the babies come out. <laughs> Homophobic trolls call out Jonathan Majors magazine cover for not being masculine enough. I'm gonna stay on this quickly as well. I wonder who wrote this article. Yeah, I'm not even gonna read the article. We can tell based off of the headline, you know, what they saying. I mean, but... even look at the picture. It's kind of. Oh, lips little. <laughs> he like having his lips perk. The Ant Man and Wasp Quantumania star struck a nerve with some fans after Ebony Magazine posted a digital cover with some some considered effeminate. Uh, what I don't like is thank you. For, I'm glad they showed that picture too. The, people keep ignoring that no one is saying wearing pink is automatically make you effeminate. It's his pose. It is the pose. They keep talking about his the body. clothes. They keep talking about what people wore in his the face 70s. Gestures. What's his name? Um, Isley Brothers, that infamous picture of them standing on the New York street and they dressed in some very, you know, questionable cl- clothing. They can go back and get a thousand of those. I know. I'm saying that they keep bringing it up as an excuse. Why? Why y'all mad at this when this exists? When those dudes, I guarantee you, would not pose like, well, I'm they not going to say that. They might would pose like that. It was maybe one. They might would. But, but the it, rest of them wasn't posing like that. But it's not just the clothes. It is the pose. The fact that they chose this as the cover it's instead the body of the other language. picture. Yeah, instead of the other picture where the character that's supposedly based this off of, the anime character, he wears his type of clothes, but he's more, uh, what's the word? Like Michael Jackson bad. You yeah, have the, the the character he played, the bad guy in that mo- in that video? Oh, that was a bad example. <laughs> Look at the way. It's not Prince with the damn chaps on. Don't talk about Prince. No, we can talk about Prince. We could talk about Michael too. Oh, we could talk about Michael and Prince. Yeah, they Prince ain't never had no allegations on him. We talking about clothing, please. Has Prince had allegations on him as being a pedo? No, that I know of. It's, and it's it's a different. I'm just saying, Prince don't wore some clothes that uh, even back then people was like, "What the hell are you well, doing?" Well, Michael Jackson been walking around with fake baby hair for years. The man had his ass cheeks out. Let's not even go into this. <laughs> Let's be real. He had his ass cheeks out. I'm sorry, excuse my language. I'm sorry. I'm just saying. He thought he was at Chippendale. <laughs> I can't Prince is, I don't know. Amazing, Damn, amazing dude. musical talent, but you know, Prince is, you know, he was. Well, Prince. Michael out here shaking and throwing Jerry Curl juice everywhere. Ain't nobody talking about that. <laughs> Jerry Curl juice. <laughs> I don't think it was Jerry Curl juice. I don't know what he did to it. Anyway. <laughs> I got the picture. I got an arguments in black comic group. I got the picture. I got an arguments in the black comic group. What are you talking about? Did I miss something. <clears throat> Sylvester was gay. Sylvester who? Come on, Sylvester, talking Stallone? About Sylvester Stallone. What's, his, what's the other guy's name? What is uh, that? That's a, that's a lot of them back then that was considered, you know, the infamous one, the one that I don't think he's ever came out. But we all know it. The one who was in that dancing movie. Um, what dancing movie? Oh, Patrick Swayze. Patrick, no, not Patrick. Him too, but the other one. The one was in Pulp Fiction. Oh, John Travolta. John Travolta. That's kind of like infamous. Everybody knows it, but he, I don't think he's came out all the way. So a lot of them, yeah. Did you guys see the video floating around showing Carmela's neck looking like a mask of some sort? <laughs> I, I haven't seen that one, but I've seen a couple pictures of them looking kind of crazy. They got a Titan. I'll tell you, when they go into the White House after about two years, they age terribly. <laughs> I think I think he's talking about another Sylvester. I don't think he's talking about the Sylvester. He's talking, talking about Sylvester. Oh, Salon. okay, yeah, the disco Sylvester. Oh, oh, the one that got into a dispute with Muhammad Ali. Ain't it? Hey, tell me if I'm wrong. That's oh, yeah, 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 yeah. The yeah, infamous yeah, yeah. The, our debate he got in with Muhammad Ali. I know you're talking about. Okay, he was gay. I'm not surprised. Well, George was at those disco. Uh, George, yeah, George, George, but you got there uh, disco. I mean. You know, he had his uh, bell bottom pants <laughs> on and was going to it. George said, Regina, all your crushes. <laughs> Look at the uh, lips in the picture. Yeah, the lips is giving it all in it, George. Lips tell you everything. It's like the eyes. 
Uh, it's funny how <laughs> it's funny how Prince is the most respected and androgynous <laughs> sentient sen- sen- <laughs> being that straight guys will protect. But he's the only one. Exactly. I agree. Oh, when good. you start talking about Prince clothes, people be like, nah, not Prince. You can't talk Look about Prince. Look at George. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Prince is the only one that people just won't. Kiefer's know. in the house. How you doing, Kiefer? We just got you talking about big ass babies. <laughs> you brought that up again. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, Prince is one that everybody protects. They don't let you talk bad about Prince, boy. Uh, uh, Duke Chubb, you don't know who Sylvester is, but Shane, I'm gonna do my research again. I'm sorry, I failed you. I will look up some Sylvester music. I promise you. I don't know Sylvester. I only know him from that one debate with Muhammad Ali. But I look up his music. Vesta. That was when they were trying to pin him against Muhammad Ali and he wouldn't do it. He was just like, I'm not going to do this in public. But he was trying to make an excuse for uh Yeah, let's talk about people. these Africans right here. <laughs> look at that. Let me make, Hold on. Let me he looked like up, Goffrey. Buddy. Let me make sure Joffrey, I got... Goffrey, Goffrey, whatever his name is. Yeah, let me make sure I got all the uh, clips. You got um, that turtle clip? The turtle? Cardi B. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I got that, I got that. I'm making sure right now. Hold on. And I think this one should be it right here. Yeah, okay. Let's go. I'm going to show this clip. Now, y'all might have saw these viral... Tripping. Y'all may have seen these viral clips. I ain't never seen them until you showed it to me. Of these two young men. These two uh, immigrants. Doing videos and humor on TikTok and probably other platforms where they uh, pretty much do mental shows. Pretty much. Uh, apparently, one of them is Nigerian. The big... The dude that called himself, huh? We know you ain't got to tell I, us. I, I know. I'm saying the one of his name, the big buff dude, name is Dancing Dancing Gorilla. He's Nigerian. I don't know if this dude's Nigerian or not, but his name is Chicken Boy. <laughs> so Dancing Gorilla and Chicken Boy. It's, it's said that neither one are black. Neither one is black American, and they're flat out doing internet menstrual shows all the time. They built large followings doing this. Some people has, I don't know, I won't say jokingly, but they've made petitions <laughs> to get them kicked off line. I'm gonna they show be kicked off line. I'm gonna show a video here. Get it off your chest. I'm, le- I'm going to let you go full. We ain't on the main channel. No, I'm just going. You can go full fledged right now. You can do it all. This is just an embarrassment. See, that's why we don't want them over here. Because they be over here embarrassing us. It's not funny being a... a, a, a I can't even get the word out. A caricature. I feel like it's being a caricature of black people. Well, hold on. Can we say a caricature, caricature of black people? Because... What do you mean a character of black people? Because of the... The, the chicken thing. The, the chicken thing. I, we already had this debate. I don't think we should take it as a damn slur to let people say we like chicken. Well, that well, uh, it's a, well, there's nothing wrong with us liking chicken, but the way they're acting is very, it's very, it's like buffoonery. It's, it's menstrual show. I'm saying that's what it, I know what it is. I'm saying like, <clears throat> I'm going to be the devil's advocate then. Yeah, you Even like talking I know to he the don't devil. Need an advocate. <laughs> should we be offended by them playing this character? Should we should we take offense to it when we know what they're doing and we don't look at these well, things as things that we should tie to ourselves? Should we, when well, somebody when somebody say monkey, because they used to say this stuff to they say this stuff to us, should we take offense to it because they're saying the word monkey? Well, I really don't take offense to it them because they're not black American. Well, they call them monkey too. That's not a, that's not a term that was specifically for black Americans. That was anybody who was African got called monkeys. They call Middle Eastern people monkeys. They call them sand monkeys. Yeah. Or saying niggers as well. So, so because they're not black America, you don't take offense to it. No, I don't take offense to it. I just think they should stop doing the stupid shit. But if that's something they want to do, they could do it. On my show. <laughs> Lord of mercy. It's Look at just, that shit. Now you ask yourself, well, the first thing you ask is who finds this funny? Now like this is black. This is black American 
This is black American written all over. Now he going with the watermelon. Uh, they don't got watermelon in Africa. They can't see it. Let me show it. They, can, they do got watermelon in Africa. Hold on, hold on. They grow watermelon in Africa? That's watermelon in Africa, yeah. Remember we told you? There was, niggas was eating watermelon in damn Jerusalem. Like, yeah, it was watermelon. Melon. You have a word for it, yeah. It's yeah. the same as that. Yeah, it's melon, yeah. You know it probably didn't okay. look the same because it was... Okay. How many hundred years ago? To thousands of years ago, but yeah. But <laughs> this was the one that made me go, okay. They're cle- the chicken one, obviously. But this was the one that was like, okay, you're clearly, you're clearly playing into stereotypes of American blacks. Blacks. Like the whole, there were postcards, there was all type of stuff they used to say that black people just love watermelon. Did all, they had plays dedicated to it? And you know what made me, this made me reminded me of. Let me just play the video right quick. About the shark bite. Shark bite. You know what this made me think of when I saw this? Damn, look at the hairline. Jesus. <laughs> that shit way back there. There was a movie by the Wayne Brothers called Bamboozled. Have you ever seen it? Don't talk about the Wayne Brothers because they'd be doing some buffoonery no, shit no, no. too. Have you seen a movie about Bamboozled? No. It's a movie about a dude. Who, who's trying to break out into Hollywood and start a, uh, he's trying to get into the entertainment industry. So he starts a play or TV show. It's a literal mental show, but all the people are black and he's a black dude who runs it. And the whole movie, people are calling him a coon. How could you do this? You know the history of this. But at the same time, there were people in the crowd laughing. So he was able to justify it to himself by saying it's meant to be funny. It's not racist, all that, all that, all that other shit. The dude, who's the tap, the tap dancing dude? Um, not Gregory Hines, the the the, the light skin dude with the dreads. I know, I know. You're talking about. He was on the Jamie Foxx. Yeah, he show. played as the main. He played as the one of the characters in the play. He was um, uh, and they played all to the stereotypes. You know, eat chicken on the plantation, all this stuff. That movie reminded me of this. How there are certain people that are willing to completely debase themselves for money. They're willing to play into stereotypes and tropes and racist things if it would give them money they were going or and what i'm getting to is his audience is white maybe kids maybe especially him in the monkey suit dancing that's probably kids that like that too but most of the stuff he do is definitely playing into white people because I, I don't know too many black people that would find this hilarious you might be surprised well, in the movie Bamboozle, there were people, there were black people in the crowd defending it. Yeah, then it was funny. So it is what it is. Now they want to get rid of this dude. <laughs> they started a petition Damn. to get rid of him. <laughs> That's how bad it is. Niggas like, man, we got to get rid of this dude. Hairline alone need to go. It's a lot going on, Keeper. It's it's a lot going on. Um it is what it is. Uh he's earning that bag for Travis Massa. Reavers won't be, but he's because I believe in t- evolution. Travis, I hate smartphones and typos. I love watermelon, grape, Kool-Aid, and fried chicken because that's all I knew growing up. But that won't make me a black man. A black That won't make me black again. Once I ate KFC, I knew the secret we all love to eat. Uh, all jokes aside, um, as things are being revealed, I think we are being duped by who is supposedly men and supposedly women in Hollywood. Perhaps we've always been flipped. I agree. If we ignore them, they'll go away. Keith, I would love to believe that. But I think what this situation is, look, I always said when it comes to black people, especially in America, black, once you reach a certain level of fame, black people cannot cancel you. But they absolutely can make you relevant or not. There are a lot of black people who got a big base. They, they make money, but they're not relevant to black people, which means they're not relevant to pop culture. You make a lot of money, but you'll never be very, uh, you'll be popular, but you won't never be mainstream. You just have a big audience and make money. You know what I mean? In order to be relevant, you have to be relevant to black people to be in pop culture. I would love to say that you can ignore them, but they have a big audience. Mm. <laughs> we can ignore them and say whatever, but they, it's still going to be going on. The problem is, do you care if they're doing it? Do you think it does something negative to black Americans? So you ignore it? Or do you think you need to get rid of this image imagery that existed once? So you got to you gotta pack them up. They gotta go. <laughs> One of the two. 
I need to rewatch Bamboozle now. Heck, many movies with conspiracy and uh, analysis eyes. Yeah, I like to go back and watch movies too. Now that I know stuff I know now. Because you, you see, didn't see things that you saw when you was younger. You see way different things. You see the whole movie totally different. Like, I'm going to be honest. I'm going to say a movie. There was a movie called Save the Last, Save the, Save the Last Dance. Yeah. As a kid, that movie was just a black dude trying to teach a girl how to dance. Yep, and then they just ended up falling in love. Yeah, it was just and like, his sister was like, "Why are you all? Why are you white man? women always her taking out black men?" We, we kids, all were like, "And this is me, like, but eight, nine, nine young kids were like, was. leave her alone. Was, why is she so angry? Angry black woman." <laughs> but, but now, now we I'm like, older. I'm like, this movie this is movie propaganda. Up. This movie is propaganda. It's, yes, it was, and it worked well on some of us. How you had the black dude who had the best friend in the streets, but he was trying to go the right direction. Yeah, <clears throat> that whole that whole thing. Of and the sister was a baby mama. Had a baby with a baby daddy who did. Yeah, <laughs> so it, it had all the stereotypes in it. And then the white girl had a father who her mother died trying to go to her recital. Like her like her trauma was much different from theirs. From theirs, and also it, it plays into the thing. Whenever you watch a movie of a interracial couple, the white person tend to have a trauma or it's something a flawed that, character, a flawed characteristic about them, whether they drugs. Or whether they're into some type of sexual uh, deviancy or they're uh, dealt with some type of trauma, like somebody died or they killed somebody or something. They tend to make a flawed character be the only one willing to date a quote unquote black person in those movies. But yeah. Yeah, at some point, they take our best and brightest and put them in skirts minus Denzel. <laughs> Don't leave Denzel out of Hollywood. Um, yeah, everybody, I think everybody has worn a dress at this point. Dave Chappelle did when he first got into the industry. Martin Lawrence did. Will Smith. Will Smith did a whole scene where he kissed him. <laughs> uh, we call it a uh, Pelicans bleep. Pelicans brief. How you said? What's in that movie? I don't remember that. Will Smith movie. Dude, I know what you're talking about, but I don't remember the movie. The name of the movie. Okay. I know. I don't even remember ever watching the movie. Well, we don't remember the movie because of what about happened that in the movie. Scene he did. No, we know. Yeah. We remember what we know what scene happened. We didn't watch. I don't remember watching the movie. Yeah, I'm trying to think of another. Yes, most of them ain't not happened to work. Yeah, so uh, I was just thinking of Denzel is too. It's over. <laughs> did uh, did George's brother Cuba Gooding Jr. wear a dress? <laughs> I don't think he um, did. I don't think he did either. I can't. I can't think of a movie he wore. Wesley dressed. put it. Wesley did Wesley put on did, the dress. He did a whole movie. Tu Wan Fu. Tu Wan Fu. Yeah. Wesley um, did a whole movie. Um. Yeah, all of them did. Obviously, Eddie Murphy. I mean, the comedians too. Do Do we count the Rock as black? He did it. Vin Diesel did it. And I'm like, it's, by the way, it's not just black men that did it. Robin Williams did it. All of Hollywood had to do it at some point. For the most part. They had to wear something, a dress, Morris a Chestnut skirt. did not dress up in a dress. We got one. We got two. Denzel and Morris Chestnut did not dress up in dresses. Tay Diggs? Tay Diggs did have on a fucking dress. <laughs> oh, yeah. On a, you remember on, that shit? On a, he did it in a... Uh, he didn't do it in he a movie. He did it in a play. He did it in a play, yeah. Ugly ass. <laughs> what the... <laughs> Uh, Travis remember the movie Lies. Uh, Rock is Samoan, but he's George. Black. How you gonna tell me what? No, no, George. How you gonna tell me what I remember? You tell us what the movie is. We know you saw the movie. It was Pelicans something. <laughs> Maybe that ain't the movie. Maybe that, no, that's the movie with Denzel. I'm tripping. That's the movie with Denzel. I don't remember the movie with Will Smith. Pelican Brief. That's Denzel and uh that white woman. So you got Morris Chestnut. Denzel. I don't think Cuba Gooding Jr. did it. You said they did, did it. Um, Tyrese didn't do it. No. Ving Rhymes, he did. Ben Rhymes did. He played Holiday. <laughs> now, ask yourself a question. We're going to end, <laughs> no, with, no, we're gonna end this discussion. We're going to end the dress conversation with this right here. Why did Ben Diesel, not Ben Diesel, Ving Rhymes, Ving Rhymes play a person named Billie Holiday when there's a woman named Billie Holiday that actually existed? Was a singer, very popular. I'm going to leave it at that. So far, Denzel, his dress moment has only been inside the title "Blue A Devil with a Blue Dress On. So Morris Chestnut is the only one that ain't worn no dress. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. There's not many of them. 
All right, uh, the movie was called The Coming of Dragons. Fuck you, George. <laughs> oh, George. <laughs> right, you know see. what the fuck that movie is. You know the name of that movie. He's right, let's, playing dumb. All right, let's get back to these uh these buffoons. Let's see what that there was a person who came out and defended them. And this person is the buffoon, buffoon themselves. They're a character of black Women. personality. Let me show this. Two guys that like they go to restaurants. And they act like a complete fool, you know. I think I don't know what's his name. He's really brolic and he be dancing like a he be dancing all crazy. And then there's the other one that he just do too much for me. So I've been seeing a petition. I've been seeing petitions for people to ban them on social media and everything. And I feel like I'm gonna get dragged because I don't have hey bye and I was and I feel like I'm gonna get dragged because I don't have the popular opinion. Because they have a community supporting them. And every single time that somebody's doing the same thing from the fucking community, y'all wanna bring them out, bring do petitions to get they are not doing anything wrong, but being cheesy and corny. Do you understand turtle talk? <laughs> what she say? You understand turtles? You understand deal with animals, I don't. <laughs> what she say? I, it's funny to me because, <clears throat> of course, she would defend it. If you look at her history in the entertainment industry and how she was introduced to the public, it makes so much sense that she would defend people acting like this in front of large audiences. Because that's what she did to get her fame. But the fact that these people, like a person like her, who apparently don't know the history of these characters they're playing, is so willing to, is so willing to get on the internet and be so wrong about something. Be so ignorant. Her black cane needs to do some training with her. Educate her on some stuff. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. You mean an old turtle? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is. Another thing is, why does she feel like she can... You know the people who were asking for the petition. You know who those people were. Those were black people. So you feel like you have the, the clout to come out and voice your opinion on black people trying to deal with other quote unquote black people. And you, I'm going to give my two cents because I think they just making their money. Well, you made your money horn and stripping and, you know, selling out all your dignity. So she of course you don't mind, get, you don't mind them doing stuff like that. You she have think because no uh, some black go in her that she gets to talk about black things. That's true. That's the problem. That's a big problem. Yeah. But, you know, they don't check their women. They let them... They let them run amok. <laughs> oh, this one right here was crazy. You know Dilbert? The comic strip? <laughs> he was talking shit about black people. <laughs> he is done. They, they Look, these white people is done playing games. I'm so glad to. I love it. I love I wish Trump was in office when he said this. It would have been an even bigger it story. It would have been epic. I'm just... I love... Get those son of a bitches off the field. <laughs> You're fine. Yeah, yeah, when they still they need get them <laughs> off the fucking field. You're fired. <laughs> I love when people are honest about who they are and just laid out on the table. I know who you are then. So y'all people some people want to be around people that don't want to be around you. George. You decide to move into a neighborhood around people you know don't want you around, but you want them to treat you nicely. And then when they don't treat you nicely, you want people to give you sympathy. Like, come on, bruh. You know they don't want you there. You, you don't want to be around your own that bad. <laughs> that you, uh, anyway, Dilbert comic strip dropped by newspapers over Scott Adams racist rant. I'm going to show the video first. Cause, uh, <laughs> he, they sick of niggas. They sick of you. They sick of you. <laughs> See what he had to say. So if, if you know, nearly half of all blacks uh, are not okay with white people, according to this poll, not according to me, according to this poll, uh, that's a hate group. That's a hate group. And I don't want to have anything to do with them. And I would say, you know, based on the current way things are going, the best advice I would give to white people is to get the hell away from black people. Just get the fuck away. Get, where, wherever you have to go, just get away. Because <laughs> there's no fixing this. This can't be fixed. It was never... <laughs> Maybe the most high laid it on this man heart. The same. Just tell the truth and tell you what it Look, is. Man. This is ancient throughout hatred. The, ancient. It's never going to, we're never going to get along. Throughout history, there's never, there's been multi 
cultural societies, but they always fall. All Rome, all the great, when I say great, I mean powerful, I don't mean good. All the great civilizations, all the great empires, they fall when they become multicultural because you're starting to have culture wars. Because there's no such thing as fair. And when you have multiple cultures or groups in one empire, they're going to want uh, 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 treatment to be even. And it don't, it don't exist. You're always going to be partial to the dominant. So if your culture is dominant, you're going to be partial to yours. You're going to always make sure yours stay in power. The second you start letting the dominant culture fall, so that the culture that are at the bottom, it's going gonna, it's gonna to collapse. It's over. So he's right. He ain't said nothing wrong, to be honest. All right, this can't be fixed. You just have to escape. So that's what I did. I went to a neighborhood where you know I have a very low black population, because unfortunately the you know there's a high correlation between the density. And this is according to Don Lemon, by the way. Um, so here I'm just quoting Don Lemon when when he notes that the when he lived in a uh, mostly black neighborhood, there were a bunch of problems that he didn't see in white neighborhoods. So even Don Lemon sees a big difference in your own quality of living based on where you live and who's there. So I I think it makes no sense whatsoever as a uh, white citizen of America to try to help black citizens anymore. It doesn't make sense. It's it's no longer a a rational impulse. And so I'm uh, going to back off from being helpful to black America because it doesn't seem like it pays off. Like, I've been doing it all my life, and I've been the only outcome is I, be, I get called a racist. That's the only outcome. <laughs> it makes no sense to help black Americans if you're white. Uh, the, the, it's over. Don't, don't even think it's worth trying. Totally not trying. And there we go. You didn't expect that today, did you? <laughs> This is a man who, I'm telling you, this is a man who looks around, he sees what's happening to what they call the Western civilization. It's, 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 it's falling. It's, it's falling. And it's like, at the end, do you, you know have who, the, Go ahead. You got the picture I sent you? Mm-hmm. Let okay. me show it. At the end, let me make sure I send it to my, what you call it? At the end, at some point, uh, hold on. They're going to blame a certain demographic for the fall of their society. Black people. They're going to say it's your fault. You're the progressives. <laughs> the liberals. Yeah, they're going to blame you. <laughs> Let me make sure I send this to myself right now. But yeah, I mean, it is what it is. But those who don't want to focus on education, you just need to get away from them. Just get as much distance as you can. That's my recommendation. Um, and I'm also really sick of seeing video after video of black Americans beating up non-black citizens. Um, you know, I realize it's anecdotal and it you know, doesn't give me a, a full picture of what's happening. But every damn day I look on social media <laughs> and there's some black person beating the shit out of some white person. I'm kind of over it. I'm over it. Is that true? No, that don't be new fights, but I'm sure there's. I mean, it's a country of 300 million people. It's a world of seven, eight billion. I'm sure you're gonna see some videos of people so getting black ass. People the only people out here whooping their ass. They're not, but he uh, understandably, if you go on the internet and you kind of see somebody that look like you getting their ass beat, it's gonna seem like that's the dominant what's normally happening. Like I said, it is what it is. Let me just make sure I load this up right quick. This definitely need to be seen. Tell us out here stargazing and. I was what. Stargazing, you're looking up at the sky. Yeah, I know. I, I happen to see some shit. <laughs> All right, let me just. That was very close and was just sitting there. All right, let me know when you want to show it. Because I don't know if I got anything to tie into it automatically. All right. Let's see. Um... <laughs> oh, Samuel, Samuel Jackson, Jackson, has he been in a. I don't think so. Okay, Samuel think so. Jackson is one. Yeah, uh, six degrees of separation. That's it. There you go. I, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's a sub, uh, subtitle for the coming out of Travis Virginia <laughs> Flex. Uh, he did ad campaigns for Balenciaga and never spoke up against them. Cardi B raped men with pills and Travis loved her music. 
<laughs> Wait, who? He? Oh, oh, you talking about the uh, the, the what you call it, dude? Okay. He is she. Today's a long day. Buffoonery recognizes buffoonery exactly. Uh, oh. they were paid at uh paid at this point. They don't care because he got enough money. Yeah, exactly. Travis, I'm not from farming in Colorado trying to get paid by having a fake campaign. <laughs> we don't know if some people faking, bruh. He ain't done nothing except be himself. Exactly. Yeah, he said it, people. He definitely said it. Is he a tiny hat? Hello, Probably. Hello. <laughs> I don't even got to look it up. I can look at him and see it. You can see it in his spirit. Now, I don't think he is, but uh, he has a tiny hat backing. That same thing to me. Uh... Probably, and I bet he has a black woman. <laughs> I'll talk as she. <laughs> Probably do. Probably do. See, Regina will be knowing what be going on yeah, in Seattle. Yeah, see, Regina, she be in Seattle. Know she know what be going she on. She know the streets. <laughs> she knows what's in these streets. Uh, so he attempts uh, to social engineer to feed, hit that feed, his racial palate. Well, yeah. Oh, dude, get away. <laughs> Travis Snowden equal seeing his white ancestor. <laughs> they talking to him, telling him to uh, suss you up. Cardi B did the Balenciaga campaign. Yeah, they wanted her to say something. She didn't. Now, you know, he's being funded to say he's uh, tired of watching video after video of blacks beating up others. Come on, man. <laughs> 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 but yeah, if he got the backing or if he is, it's the same thing to me. Because it gives him the same level of, uh, what's it called? Well, the, well, he got fired. I don't know why I don't have the, oh, I said, I said it right. He got dropped by the newspaper. He didn't care. He's already made his money. I don't even nobody read nobody reads newspapers no more. Nobody reads no comics. I can see why they dropped him from the newspaper because he's saying he's separating himself from uh black people and then yeah. maybe black people that, you know, read it, read yeah. it or are part of where he offensive. works. So but yeah. he didn't say nothing wrong. But his thinking. But his thinking, yeah. He he said everything he should say. Now, let, let me, me show short ass midget. Let me show this video. You guys know race mixing was illegal up until 2000. Uh, race mixing was illegal up until 2002. Oh You're going to give up 50,000 years of evolution if you mix up with this dude. Are you filming us? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hey, but you, just, just, just look awkwardly. You, you, no, you realize that race mix it's going to give up 50,000 years just of your evolution, right? There's 2 billion of those people being born. Because of uh, did you know that it's actually better evolutionary to like? Uh, no, 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 it's no, it's not. I'm not gonna talk science. No, 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 it's, no, it's not. I'm a scientist. No, I'm actually, I'm a scientist, no, and I'm not gonna talk about this. Literally, video. if you literally. Hey, hey, the dude out here trying to save his woman. <laughs> He's trying to save his woman. Now I will say this. It, you notice the black. The quote unquote black dude's energy is very uh passive. And that when the Hebrew Israelites that walked up to him and said, This is my get, lady. You need to get away from that white woman. Yeah, yeah. That white woman's a devil the Bible speaks because, of. You need to go find you a sister. This my woman, man. He be trying to fight and doing everything but the white man. Oh, he's very docile. Submissive. And this sounds like some little Reddit dude. <laughs> Like it sounds like some dude. I don't he, know that black dude looking. I'm like, he like he might, he be might a big ball dude. his ass up. I don't know. Literally, you're you're just throwing down your genetic line. For sure, for sure. Pretty much, you're just larping. You're yeah, you're yeah, larping as a it. European in America. It. If you had any actual like heart uh-huh. and integrity, hey, uh-huh. are you, you sorry, go back to Are you done? What are you a Jew? Are you done? Are you Jewish? Are you, no, fuck no, man. Are you so, done though? No, but I'm t- I'm saying the truth. So, now this is I'm showing I show these videos in parallel. I show Dilbert and I'm showing this dude. White dudes, look, and I'm not one of these dudes that come over here and say, yeah, white men got it bad. I'm saying I'm telling you, the image is falling. Not only just the king, the image is falling. <laughs> they see what's going on. Their young boys are starting to do the same thing young black boys been doing in school. They're starting to fail. Your time is up. <laughs> It's the end, man. No, no, hold on. Actually, hold on. Though, I know, like, are you I done? am a scientist and yeah, you stop are wrong. Stop, stop. He's say, say, so you get the point. He went out there. He wanted Is to... that George? <laughs> oh. George is out there in the late night. George out there with that little snow bunny. All right, George. You get caught with that snow bunny with the wrong people. They going to whoop his ass. You know, you got to defend yourself. I'm sure that's happened to him plenty of times, though. <laughs> All right. Uh, let me show this. This is NAACP. 
We're discussing and celebrating the past, present, and future of music from Africa with the ruler, Adu, and uh, whatever, whatever, to kick off the NAAC, NAACP Image Awards Entertainment Summit. You know what they've been doing this for every platform? Trevor, they're pushing Afrobeats hard. They're pushing Afrobeats. You know why? They're pushing Afrobeats? Because something just failed. What's that music them Koreans was doing? K-pop? K-pop failed in America. They were pushing K-pop hard and it it went nowhere in America. They remember those those dudes that do it over here and giving them awards and it did nothing in America. Now they're about to start pushing Afrobeat now. They gotta find somebody else to exploit. They don't they don't they don't about drain hip hop and arm, they don't about drain it. They need another genre. The problem is they I'm, I'm gonna say it like this. Say it. They ain't getting it from. <laughs> it's it's not. I didn't even realize that song with uh Kendrick Lamar and uh. It's just Afrobeat. What's her name? Is that SZA? SZA. They said off the Black Panther soundtrack. Yeah. That was Cape. That was all uh, Afrobeats. I did not and realize so, that was Afrobeat. And somebody said that was the best Afrobeat song ever. And I actually like that song. It's Afro. And once again, who did it? Black America. Like, well, and, I don't I'm know not what being, the fuck SZA is. I'm not trying to be like that. It's just. They, oh. so when you talk about jazz, hip hop, R and B, gospel, funk, rock, disco, rock and roll, like they got all this from one group. Neo it was able soul, to, it soul. Was able to make, to make trillions off of it. Now they got to find. They're trying to find somebody else. Niggas ain't created nothing. Did you say country them. music? Country music as well. Blues, folk music. They don't create it. They don't make so much money off black people. And I can say in the last twenty years, black people have not created a new genre. Normally every. 15, 20 years or so, niggas start a new genre. They haven't. We created drill. You can say drill. You can say, uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, trap soul, which is R&B, trap music. It, we haven't created something new yet. So they like, the niggas ain't creating nothing new. We gotta go find something then. So when they try to do K-pop, now they're trying to do Afrobeat. So, and what they're, what they're trying to do is get black Americans to hop on the Afrobeat wave. And it, it might, might work. work. Kendrick Lamar did it. What's his name? Uh, Sway Lee. That song he did with French Montana. That song was amazing. That's Afrobeat. And Sway Lee killed that song. It's a, he killed it. He completely carried that song. I think he sold the song to French Montana, which is crazy. That song got a billion views. So don't be surprised if niggas don't start doing Afrobeat. No. Now that's gonna create a whole other level of tension because you know who take all the credit for Afrobeat. Nigerians. So if you start putting black Americans in front of Afrobeat, <laughs> it's gonna create even more. Of a, you know what I mean? Give a damn. But I think they're trying to they're trying to push Afrobeat because they're trying to make some money off another uh, music category. That's just American capitalism. That's all. There's far more important things to talk about. NAACP. Hey, they look. They trying to. They part of the American system as well. <clears throat> Uh, he had an animated series based on the strip. Well, I never seen it. There are several photos of Samuel Jackson wearing kits. I mean kilts, if that's uh count. Uh that, that don't count. That's historical wear. That's from Ireland, uh Scotland, I'm sorry. So black people don't wear that. So I'm black gonna people say, did wear that. I'ma say that's a win for black you, people Regina. Did wear that. With the bagpipes and all that stuff. So we can't you got do pictures? That. I don't like Dilbert for a reason. Now I have a better reason. The one we all used to watch was uh Charlie Brown. Now, Charlie Brown was popular in uh, the other one. I forgot the other one. Uh, Travis Hake confirms my stance. Travis, I got Hell the Hell no, you can get my email address. You have the email address for the channel. <laughs> Hell to the no. <laughs> my phone hating on me. Oh, yo, uh, I look correct. Killing you ain't hating ass, Travis. Thank you for my validation of trying to millionaire all nations. I like City Pop. You mean K-pop? Millionaire all nations gonna get your ass popped. All these genres include Travis Black People Created. Ooh, is this a China connection to the reason Africa is being so heavily pushed? Well, yeah, that, that too. America notices that Africa is having starting to gain a lot of influence in Africa. So America says, how do we get into there? They don't like us. So how do we get in, get in with them? Oh, okay. They want access to our media. So we'll give them attention. We'll take their music. We'll take their artists. We'll put them on. Look, you had, you had, uh, you had a uh, Afrobeat artist at the NBA All-Star game performing at halftime. You're giving them awards I can now. Imagine Grammys. how that went. You're starting to acknowledge them and give them Grammys and stuff. So they're trying to get to Africa through their celebrities, their entertainment. 
Not but they think work. you can get to them the same way you get through African Americans. But I don't know if it's gonna work. <sighs> you need the niggas on your side, like time on a cable. I <laughs> is on your side. All right. Uh, what's this? Oh, and culture back. I don't know what uh, Boy, <laughs> JJ, JJ did Ann Colton, but she been, it's years later, and she's still, uh, <laughs> now when she said black Americans have a special place in this country, I said, what? <laughs> this is Ann Colton? Boy, JJ, JJ been... laying a special pipe. <laughs> <laughs> That's why black people JJ got, got a, a special place. She had right. that she, she whipped, boy. Damn. I got that whip appeal. Let me see what you got to say. The reason people are concerned about the words they use, the reason Americans care about civil rights, the reason we are sensitive to racism is for one issue and one issue only, and that is how black Americans were treated in this country. It is because of, of the legacy of slavery and Jim Crow. Those do not compare Irish, you know, the new groups, they always get a little bad treatment. Do not compare that to how blacks are treated in this country. You don't get to piggyback on the black experience in America. You do not get to do that just because you are a woman, an immigrant, gay, um, Hispanic. No, the rest of you can go F yourselves. No, this is for black Americans. We seem to have forgotten them. It's not a rainbow coalition. Uh <laughs> so I think this is probably an older clip, and it just refreshed it during Black History Month, but <sighs> when they say your enemy of my enemy. <laughs> now, JJ is actually out here. Doing what George Look is at, supposed no, hold on, you to defend, be doing. Jay, he's a sick Negro. He's a sick Negro. Oh, look at this. Oh, God. Look at this. Zelensky and Biden are fighting the same war against racism and imperialism as Malcolm and Martin. So this Joe is, is so... <laughs> so Joe is who, well, who Malcolm. Malcolm. Who Malcolm? No, Joe is Malcolm and, and uh, Zelensky. I, know, I think Zelensky is Malcolm. How is Zelensky Malcolm? Because oh, he's the one who's he at war. war. He's the one who's at war, quote unquote. No, Joe would be Malcolm. Why? Because he's taller. <laughs> <laughs> and he, he's no, uh, Joe don't, Joe Biden don't want peace either. That's what I'm saying. Oh yeah, okay. Well, did Martin really want peace? We know we found out he didn't really want peace until he was convinced by some people to go that route. So he had a cache of weapons that he was ready to ride. You know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I see this trending. This Tommy and this Mayweather fight trending. You know that that Tommy and Natalie Nunn. No. What's the, what's the name of that network? Uh, you talking about that Zeus network? Yeah. It's that, a fight. The spinoff Oxygen channel with the baddies and shit. That's what, that's what it is. They took all them shows and just <laughs> remixed them. But this is just disrespectful. And you had, obviously you had people in the comments roasting them like, what are you doing? Maybe they could actually throw bows. But see, this is what white liberals do. They use the black icons, once again, to push their agendas. All right, let's move on, man. Oh, speaking of Malcolm X, Malcolm X's family announces lawsuit against CIA, FBI, NYPD for wrongful death. A who? A father. Come on, man. Well, remember they just released the papers. Remember they just released the information about they knew his life was in, uh, a threat against his life. And remember the guy who was arrested for killing him? Now the other guy saying he had nothing to do with it. It's just me by myself, which he's clearly lying. He's just trying to take all the blame. And of course, Ben Crump is on the scene. It, it, Mr. Amelin with the gangster himself. lean. Amelin, he bro, I'll say this: the man work hard. He don't be on video calls. Tell he be in person every single picture. That means he on how many hours of how many uh, flight miles you think he got last year? Is he getting flued out? I think he's paying out his own pocket. He's getting to it. He ain't sending people that work for him. No, he coming himself. He making sure his face is right there next to it to make sure it's stamped by the, the crump. Mr. Crump himself, he made sure he stamped every case to make it authentic. He beat out the Merritt dude. The Merritt gone. The Merritt dude had to just run for office. Lee. Yeah, Merritt Lee had to just run for office to try and get some clout. Because they were hitting up Crump more than him. So he like, fuck it. I just run for mayor or something. He for the peoples. <laughs> the peoples. The family of uh, slain civil rights leader Malcolm X marked on Tuesday the anniversary of 1965 assassination by the announcing plans to sue agencies including the CIA, FBI, New York Police Department, and others for $100 million, accusing them of playing a role in his death. And the only thing I don't like about this is she's absolving the Nation of Islam, who clearly has something to do with it. That's, I hate to say it, Farrakhan, 
I'm, I'm just uh, allegedly, allegedly, I'll say it. It's alleged that Farrakhan and uh, uh, the Honorable Muhammad, you know, allegedly they're the ones that put the hit on them. That's just what it is. So her doing this is completely moving them out of, you know, being accused of it, even though everybody in their mama know they had something to do with it. The dude that killed him was a part of the nation of Islam. Now we can say, oh, he was just an implant by the government to add to, to frame it towards the nation of Islam, but let's be real. I'm just saying. Come on. We're giving, we're giving a hot take right now. We got to give something to it. Come on. I don't have nothing to say. <laughs> Uh, I've no not done take, any research on joking. this to know uh, whether or not uh, Mr. Lewis Farrakhan was involved. They ain't no hot take. That's, that's the allegation. allegation. Let's uh, be real. That's, that's the allegation. Death of Malcolm X, and I, I don't. I won't comment on that. So you think it had nothing to do with the Nation of Islam? Nothing. Even though he came out and spoke against the leader, saying that he was a damn pedophile, or at least he was messing around with young girls. You don't think it had nothing to do with him? Damn, we try to really, damn, Joe's gonna get your ass. You really shook. <laughs> Two of his daughters uh, were joined by Attorney Ben Crump in a news conference, on the, and they asked for a hundred million, which is, yeah, on the side of a former uh, ballroom in Upper Manhattan, where Malcolm X was fairly shot, and the crowd gathered to speak, uh, hear him speak on February twenty first, nineteen sixty. Wow. Three men were convicted, but two were exonerated in 2021 after the renewed investigation into the case. I guess them showed the evidence used to gain convictions were shaky and that authorities uh, had held back some information. The co-administrator of her, co of her father's estate filed uh, notices of claim, uh, which is the first step in the process of saying that the agencies conspired with each other and with other individuals and acted and failed to act in such a way to bring about the wrongful death of Malcolm X. For years, our family has fought for the truth to come to light, she said. You're not going to say nothing. You're really going to just... Uh, I wish her the best on her case. I hope she receives justice for her father's untimely death, and I wish the best untimely for the sister. Untimely death. He was murdered. <laughs> untimely <clears throat> death. Negro. Uh, an example of City Pop is songs like Plastic Love, and another song is called Stay With Me. Okay, so City Pop is a whole other genre I don't know about. I might look it up. Travis don't know to see the progressive black edge like get stomped out by Pastor David Lynn. David Lynn, stop, George. It's, I got to check you on that. David Lynn ain't checking nobody. David Lynn. I remember I used to watch the, uh, Dave, I used to watch David Lynn. There was a white guy who used to go on the corners and preach at, at like colleges and stuff. I forgot his name. I started watching him when he started talking about racist shit. I was like, I was a youngster then. <laughs> JJ. <laughs> See, Regina, JJ, a national monument for the proof is uh, even Mike Travis have a bow down to the greatness, but hate on me when I convince JJ to answer the call of the all nations. JJ is definitely uh, Ann's national mo mountain. I mean, monument treasure. <laughs> mountain. <laughs> yeah, she, I don't know. We keep making that joke. She probably ain't dealt with that man in a while. Maybe they're still together. I don't know. Travis historically has no comment, aka Massa, I'm on point. Uh, Travis standing on your square and Tiny has got you um, booking. Yeah, everything is true. Like Travis role model, Kurt Angle would say, it's Dan. Who is Kurt Angle? <laughs> Wrestler. I oh, sent a video to Messenger. Uh, shoot, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan practically admits the conspiracy on NOI in a video stating NOI has their in-house ways of dealing with traitors like Malcolm. Yeah. I mean, we don't like to admit it, but the truth is true. Or at least the conspiracy is the conspiracy. <clears throat> you really, you really <laughs> don't say nothing on that. Wow, let's move on then. Angela Davis discovers ancestors were Mayfla Mayflower Pilgrim. Uh, was a Mayflower Pilgrim in episode of Finding Your Root? <laughs> bullshit. What do you mean bullshit? I don't think it's true. No, she found out both sides of her family. I don't believe it's true. What do you mean? I don't think it's true. I think it's a lie. Why would it be a lie? Angela, uh, Angela Davis, the Black Panther freedom fighter, and then it just so on. happens to be that her both of her parents was on the Mayflower shit. Well, she was compromised too. What were you talking about? She she defended herself in court against a. We don't, we talked about this. We don't even go down to Angela Davis. Turn feminist. Hardcore. I know her history. Like, you come don't on, need to we, give we me gonna claim, we gonna let her. We gonna let her claim the Black Panther 
thing when we know what she went on to do? You gonna let her claim her both parents came off the Mayflower? No, it's saying that one of her parents came off the Mayflower and another one was a slave owner. Oh. That's not impossible at all. Let me show the video. Henry Louis Gates is exposing his movie. He's exposing his ass. That's why, and I will say the white people definitely saw this and immediately started saying, ooh, look like she owes some reparations. Sure do. <laughs> they definitely said what she's... She they didn't definitely... get no reparations. See what you're looking at? That is a list of the passengers on the Mayflower. <laughs> no, I can't believe this. <laughs> no. <laughs> My hands... If it's true, she knew. She knew her line, and that's why she was set up to do all the things that she said that she did. Well, we want to say this, Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy is a white man. Barry Gordy's great 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 grandfather is a white man. man. Yeah, he has a lineage of white of a white uh, ancestor. So, and it wasn't uh, according to them, it wasn't a situation of a uh, uh, slave owner. It was. It was a consensual marriage. And that's a nice looking white man. <laughs> Ancestors did not come here on the Mayflower. You, your ancestors came no. on the Mayflower. No, no, no. You no. are descended no, no, no. from one of the 101 people who sailed on the Mayflower. Oof. That's a little bit too much. <laughs> <laughs> now, people were saying, how does she not expect this? I don't think she's surprised of having possible white lineage. I think she's surprised it was the Mayflower. Is it a, a woman or a man? He didn't say. He didn't say anything. To clear. deal with right now. Did you ever in your wildest dreams think that you may have descended from people who laid never the foundation never. for this country? Never. <laughs> never. Never. So she was, she's descended from the people that laid the foundation of America, but she was fighting against the yeah. foundation that had been laid because Poor she didn't American. look like those people no more. A uh, new truth were revealed <laughs> about the family of the Black Power Movement leader. On February 21st episode, we know, we know according to, the, to this episode, the results of the DNA revealed that one of her ancestors identified as William Brewster. Is a man. Remember that movie Brewster's Millions with Richard yep. Pryor? Yeah. The white man left him money. That's funny. Yep. Uh, was one of the uh, 101 pilgrims who traveled to the United States uh, about aboard the uh, Mayflower. Do you know what you're looking at? You know, we don't know. Uh, David's uh, initial permission with, for the Gates team was to dig into the true identity of the maternal grandparents, who David's uh, mother, Sally Bell, a foster child, had never met. Richards found that the father of David's mother was John Austin Darden, a white lawyer from Alabama who was consist considered a prominent and wealthy member of his community. He has my mother's lips. It's so funny. I could see him. I could see her in him. David said as they viewed a photo of Darden and compared the resemblance beside the photo of Belle, whose biological mother was black. So her mom, her, her family got a, 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 a white man, black woman. They got a, they just, this, this is what they do. Like it seemed like every generation that, that ended up happening. Like, <laughs> I'm just saying they knew who they were. Like it is what it is. Uh, I guess I got both. I guess I'm both glad, but I'm also really angry. My mother may not have been the only one. She may have siblings who are half black. So this actually opens up so many other questions. Gates also revealed truth to the distant ancestors, including one of one from the 1700s who was a slave owner in Georgia. David's father, Benjamin Frank Davis, never told her that her paternal grandfather, Murphy Jones, was a white man who had multiple children with her grandmother, Molly Spencer. The episode also revealed that Spencer's father, a black man named Isom Spencer, was born a slave in 1824 on a... Uh, Marengo County Cotton Plantation. He was freed after the Civil War ended. He had a fight in court to demand freedom for his nieces and nephews who the plantation owner tried to retain as slaves. That's a white woman. <laughs> That's a white woman. It is what it is. That's why she got in that heavy, heavy in that feminist shit. Because the black shit wasn't really who she is. Mm. Mm mm mm. Uh, cause she, I'm shocked. <laughs> exactly. I'm not shocked. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we could have expected that. Well, let me, uh, now this should be quicker now because what the, because it's his own, uh, screen now. All right, let's move on. 
But are you surprised? No. <laughs> no, not is, at all. Is it more so because of her her decisions in life or how she looks? A little bit of both. A little bit of both. Okay. Normally, you who you you reveal who you are. Yeah. The spirit bear witness. Yes, it does every time. It tell you who somebody is. Just listen to him. All right. Bill Maurer, the Jew, yep, sticks up for slave owning founding fathers in viral clip. It should be on his page. I'll play it from here. No, okay, I got the clip next to it. Hold Ain't that the one that like black queens? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's all. When you see when you talk about Jewish dudes, it's not a surprise when you see them with a black woman. Who are are wanting to cancel Thomas Jefferson and George Washington because they had slaves and everybody else in an era when everyone had slaves who could afford it, right. including people of color in other parts of the world. Yeah. It was a human thing. Yeah. It's not just a white thing. Yeah. Okay. So um, if you're going to cancel Jefferson and Washington, you have to cancel Jesus because he never spoke against it. You know what amazes me? When Jewish people, so so called Jewish people, call themselves the chosen people, God's people, and all this stuff, yet they're the biggest atheists. <laughs> they're either uh Orthodox or atheists for the most part. They're either super duper into it or they're atheists. And yet they still refer to themselves as Jewish, even though they're atheists. So you don't even believe that stuff, but yet you're taking that title. And they're and they have this deep level of disrespect for Jesus, what they call, who they call Jesus. And what he just said is not true. He didn't speak against it. Because his people, <laughs> he didn't say it was a problem for his people to do it to your people. But you know, that leads into a whole nother discussion that we won't go into right now. It still ain't low, I'm about to say. All right, hold on y'all. All right. Let's go here. Let's see what they're talking about right here. You gonna load that? Forget it. All right. Alabama's first black. What? Are oh, you doing a beat? Alabama's first black mayor doesn't care about black nope. votes. I'm gonna play this clip from uh, D2 Tubman 2. She has a YouTube channel. Oh, this person has a YouTube channel as a man or woman. And I'm gonna show you the clip that she put up. No one asked me, I can come smile. I don't fucking have to do no goddamn work. Okay? I don't have to do no work systemically, and I'm gonna be fine. And guess what? I will always get 38 to 45% of the white vote. If I get 30 to 45% of the white vote, I don't fucking have to damn get the black vote I got this past election. I'll fucking win. You got black city? That's great. You can have all black everything. And guess what? You won't have green nothing. You know, white, the white money thinks that you are looking after their shit. They will take their shit to Prattville. They will take their shit to Pike Road, and you won't have shit. You see the comment as you hear it? No. What? You said what now? Did you hear it? Hear what? What he said? Yeah, I heard what he said. What'd you think? Deception. <laughs> he said, I only need 30 to 45% of the white vote. Without that, I'm good. I don't need a black vote. He said, you can get all the black vote, but it, if, but it ain't going to be green. You, gotta, you need a white vote. Because if you don't get the white vote, they gonna, if they don't think you're protecting them, they're going to... Go away from your ass. Funny, he said the black vote ain't green because it actually is. It is green, it's black, but yeah. This is kind of the this is how politicians view things. Remember when Stacey Abrams went on AFAP South Show and he asked her, Why can't you make a bill that's for black people? A policy for black people. And she was like, Well, black people are a minority and you need other people to win. You're never gonna get something that specifically helps just black people because they're not big enough part of the population, according to them. So he's saying the same thing. He's a lot more vulgar with terms. Yeah, he's talking shit. 
he kind of being more disrespectful about it, but he's saying the same thing. I wonder how he talked when he be on that uh, podium and being a oh, politician. Oh, yeah, he definitely be doing the pony show for him. He kiss a little ass here and there. Definitely do. Uh, let me... Uh, that not going to work. You don't think so? Oh, you got to... Okay, try. Nope. Okay, whatever. Uh, Trevor can speak up to Angela because she got a... <laughs> You got no NI, NOI army behind her. But Jenny said, I call BS too, Travis, and don't forget to add communist. Or exactly. exactly. That's, another thing. That's what I was going well. with, the communist. Definitely a communist as well. Because she had her inherited privileges. Although, um, Regina said, although I'm looking into com communism uh, to understand better how so many blacks were then and still now involved or attracted to it. Well, they was able to convince black people that in order for us to get ahead, we have to attack the system. A lot of the people in communism believe that you have to destroy the system because it's oppressive to all people. If they convince black people to take what they go through and tie it to everyone else. That's what you get the rainbow coalition, people of color, um, non white Americans. You start getting terms like that where it's broad for everybody. And black people back then thought, well, if we work with everybody, it'll benefit us. And it, we saw throughout history. It doesn't, they start with black people as a foundation. They build on it, bring everybody up and black people still stay at the bottom. So, uh, keep <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Regina said my mom's side is okay. Mom said uh, mom had been tracing her father's lineage, found out uh, heavy Cherokee, mulattoes, and Apache, and just recently uh, to her Indian ancestry owned white slaves. Oh, uh, he said he said has an interesting twist. Yeah, I looked at more lineage. Um, we found one mulatto on our father's line. Only one mulatto. A woman it was a great wait. It would be our father's, our father's father's great great grandmother. She was a mulatto woman, but everybody else was, you know, black from what I saw. On our mother's side, I didn't see no. I can only find my. I can only trace back my mother's lineage, my mother's mother's lineage, and I saw no uh a lot. I saw an Indian, Native American, should I say? But I saw no more. Uh, I didn't see any white and I, I didn't see many mulattoes. But yeah. Come on, thing. And let me go back to this. What time is it? 338. Uh, in 2022, black farmers were persistently left behind from the USADA's loan system. Any other you want to say? They better jump on the Colorado train. <laughs> I was thinking that my head. They you better, better jump on the Colorado train to get niggas to get behind you. Because clearly this they ain't, they ain't dealing. You better with call you. up them black people in Colorado and get the blueprint. Oh, y'all really? I'm y'all. I don't like that y'all calling it a scam and saying they came up with some shit. I don't like that y'all doing that. I don't, don't do that to those black people. That black man and his black wife are out there in Colorado trying to get, get in food. The bag. To the citizens. Yeah, trying to get a bag. <laughs> Lucius Abrams is the third generation to take over the family of Georgia farm and an operation that has long grown cotton, corn, and soybeans. When he did not receive any loan a loan in time to buy the seeds and supplies he needed, he joined the Pickford versus Glickman class action lawsuit against USDA. In 1999, a lawsuit alleged that the myriad ways the agency discriminated against black farmers resulted in uneven distribution of farm loans and assistance. This caused many black farmers to lose their land and farms to foreclose it. That's the point. They want you to lose it. But now they can steal it, they can steal it from you by not helping you, not giving you loans. Remember, remember that story in uh, Oregon? Was it in Oregon? Where the, where the uh, farmers were going to get a, a tax break, I mean debt break, yeah. forget their debt. And the white and Asian farmers was like, no, <laughs> this is discriminatory. We should be a part of this too. We have debt as well. And they were like, but these black farmers literally have more debt because they get less loans and all this other stuff. You they have didn't to give help. a damn. They didn't give a damn. They said, you, you don't help us, do nobody getting it. <laughs> that was kind of hilarious. But yeah, man, uh, according to Travis, you need to be a scammer as a black farmer to make it. You can't do it uh, through government assistance, through loans, but you have to pay back. And black farmers tend not to get as many uh, government contracts as well. Remember, that's one of the things people said about reparations. They said, well, 
one thing you could do is give black farmers contracts with the government for food that would automatically give them revenue because you're always going to have work. You got to be these large contracts with the government to produce food for the country. If we get reparations, they're not doing that. No, see that they were saying that could be one of the forms of reparations. You know, people say education and all the other stuff. If you get reparation, you can separate yourself. <laughs> you just saying get away from them. Like that, what that white dude said, get the hell away from them. He said, at this point, it's not worth it. <laughs> oh, that dude said, y'all wasting your time. It's pointless. <laughs> they don't like you. They beating your ass. Just leave them to their own devices. He pretty much saying nothing you ever, nothing you do is good enough. It's never. It isn't. It's, it's not because of what happened in America with slavery. It's never going to go away. And because people naturally want true justice and they'll never be able to give it to you because they're not going to want to. What they would have to do to give you actual justice. They're never going to be willing to do it. What are you doing? I'm reloading. Damn. Can I not reload it? You in a rush or something? I'm Carlton Sanders and. Huh? Gonna get sick again too. I'm Carlton Sanders, and I'm from Forest, Mississippi, and I was a chicken grower for some 28 years for Cook Foods, and I lost everything I had uh, due to the upgrades and a bunch of guys that didn't like black folks. That's the bottom line. What? Uh, I ordered that brand of chicken. Well, he was giving it to you for a little while. They got rid of his ass. I'm going to check and see if it's on my ordering guy. Are you going to stop using it because they, they fucked him over? Is that his brand or no, is he was it working somebody? for them. He was producing oh, they, the chicken for they them. They fucked him over? Yeah. Okay. They won't get now another. <laughs> now another dollar. For me. <laughs> now you see this right here? It says, uh, let me just quiet it. They said the company sent Sanders a 23 item update list for his farm, which totaled $318,000 in charges that Duke. weren't requested of white farmers. Take a read, Duke. No, I'm asking you for your opinion on it. Oh, I'm sorry. What's the, what are you saying? <laughs> I'm not saying they can't read. I'm, I'm asking for your opinion. They can read. So they like, a yes, we can read. Is it wrong for them to be like, hey, we need some upgrades to your farm? I mean, but they didn't ask for the same upgrades from the white farmers. So what were these upgrades? The 23 items. Let's see if they go through them. Oh, hold on. People, people don't want to do that. <laughs> but now Tyson and, and Cook, ooh. It's just like you inhale with those guys. <laughs> <laughs> Remember that infamous? They were suing the damn company, the big company. And one by one, they started dropping, settling. And then one guy was like, I'm sorry, I, I couldn't do it. I, I couldn't hold on any longer. I had Listen, to settle. He that was so bad. <laughs> he, was he, he was in a car <laughs> with the dark tents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was so bad. It was his neighbor. They had been we friends for over years. 50, 40 years. And when the money got tight he and shit hit the him. fan, he was like, I didn't want to do it to him, but I had ran out of money, man. <laughs> <laughs> I used to uh, cry and couldn't stand to come by here because I did everything from scratch. And uh, I'd been here for 30 some years. Had a beautiful garden. Uh, beautiful. You know, everything was just good and perfect. So, you know, therefore, it, you know, it just made a mess out of things to have to get out and move somewhere else and relocate. And you know how it is. It was just hard all over. The trauma we have to go through in this country. Farm, farm farming is generational wealth, and they always make it hard for you to keep anything in this country as a black person that gives your family generational wealth. So they're always going to do stuff like that. All right, let's move on. Uh, oh, Representative Jeffries, the uh, Democratic uh, leader, had a a run-in with some protesters because. Uh, <laughs> They was getting at him 
getting at him about the Ukraine war and how he was defending. And you know he's a staunch he's a staunch uh, Zionist as well. The first thing they do when these black people come out is they admit that they're the Zionists and they're for and pro Israel. First thing they say, they don't even talk about the black people first. Talk about the Zionists. <laughs> talk about Israel first. It's crazy. But uh, yeah. Hopefully this loads. Uh, Regina said, uh, thanks for the history cliff notes about uh, communism, Duke. Salute. It's a scam, Duke. <laughs> All right, here we go. Okay, uh, let me let these load up. Because now they're showing. Um, doo -doo -doo. I keep telling blacks, you need to buy other politicians like others do. We plead and beg politicians we don't grease their palms. Well, you're talking about PACs then. Yeah. A lot of people say that black people need to get their money together and start political pacts of the black pack and buy politicians one by one. So, but you know, people don't want to, in order to do that, you have to have a consistent stream of money to the pack. You have to get donations and all that stuff. And you know, a lot of these people that we, we consider, would you consider them leaders or are they just wealthy black people? Um, like P Diddy and them, they're just wealthy black they're people. They're just right? wealthy black people. A lot of them have their own agendas and, uh, and motives. So they're not going to be willing to donate to this pack to get the politicians that the rest of the black community might want. They'll be like, no, if I'm giving the most money, we're going with this politician. And the rest of the black community might be like, well, we, that, he ain't shit. We don't want him. He ain't going to do what we want. So as long as there's people with more money, it'll never work. Thanks for the history, Cliff. No, I'll rewrite that one. It's all a scam, dude. Uh, just stop it. Uh, he came there with a scheme to get paid. He joined the lawsuit so he can <laughs> has a history of trying to get paid. He came to Colorado as a buying land. He knew it wasn't going to be easy. What are you talking about? Um, Some of those black farmers. Damn, you calling him scammers too? <laughs> so y'all are going to call all the black farmers scammers now. Listen, they doing what they got to do to survive out here. All right. Man. They taking notes from the Nigerians. Travis and Duke, if you don't mind sharing, Hub wants to know uh, what your last name is. And do you know any Harris? We do know. I know some Harris's. I'm, I'm trying to think. Harris. I, I could tell. I, I, I won't tell you what our last name is, but I'll tell you uh, some sub groups that we're related to. Okay. Like uh, Jones, related to Joneses, Hobson, Hobsons, Kershaws, uh, Williams. Williams. Uh, sorry, Washington. This is our father's side. Washingtons. Yeah. Um. I can't remember the other names. I'm be honest. Smiths. Smith, yeah. Now, our father's from, well, well, they're from South Carolina, but they moved up to Philadelphia. Philadelphia, yeah. But they came back down. To some North of the Carolina. family members. Yeah, we got our some, mama's side, they ain't never went nowhere. They've been they North Carolina. straight from North Carolina. <laughs> they straight from North Carolina. Yeah. Kershaw's, Hobson, no, that's the grandfather's side. Yeah. He came from South Carolina, but the Kershaw's, the Loves. The Loves, too. Who else? That's, that's pretty much the bulk of them. It's more. I it's just more. can't remember. It's a lot of them, yeah. Pretty big family, honestly. Compared to other people's family, it's a pretty big family. But, you know, as time goes on, the family reunion, people start doing a reunion with just their last name. <laughs> they don't come together. And the only reason why I want to tell you uh, my la our last name is because this is, you know, Travis is me. Yeah, yeah that's his <laughs> See, actual... Duke is not, that's not his name. That's He's always had a nickname. nickname as a child. He has several, but, you know, I wasn't special enough. To get a nickname, it's just it, always. Don't it mean more when somebody call you Travis? Oh, don't it mean more when somebody call you by your original name as your nickname? What? When people call you by your original name as your nickname, that's that's that means your name sticks to you. Nickname just means you you did something that made them laugh and they call you that now. I still don't know how I got the nickname. Oh, the Dukester? I don't know how I got that one. <laughs> I think it was Marvin that did it. I don't know. Uh, yeah, you had a couple of nicknames. Um. Uh, uh, he's a Zionist. Uh, he's for Israel and Hebrew Israelite. Uh, three different ideologies when it comes to our skin folk and kin folks. We stay confused. <laughs> All right. Let me uh, show what he had to say when, they, when white people came up on him talking about Ukraine. How he didn't really have much to say for him. Good evening, everyone. What an honor and a blessing to be here. With you all. I can't hear that well. It sounds really uh, static. Can you hear it well? 
I can me can make do. Okay, I'm just saying I hope they can hear it well because to me it's static, but I know what he's saying, but I'm hoping they can hear it. You really couldn't hear whatever they were saying in the background. Well, yeah, you can't hear that anyway. They just pretty much, the, the, the guy says, what is your peace plan for Ukraine? And he just started going at him. And, all, and the people trying to yell over him, like, get out of here with and that. And then they started, they upped the music. They started playing. Now, remember in the script. <laughs> they started playing the music so you could tune the people out. the scriptures out. tell you that when you start telling the truth, they're going to just turn the music louder where they can just not hear you. So when you're trying to teach truth in the end, people are going to just turn the music on and party. But anyway. So the men are trying to tell them we're almost at World War Three. We have a chance to go to nuclear war. What are you doing? We need a peace plan. We don't want to sit here and hear you talk about no damn societal stuff. Let's be real. This is a, this should be on the back burner right now. We're on the verge of World War Three, and the black people in there said, "Turn the music on." And started dancing. Well, those who are not meant to get it are not going to get it. So they playing Tina Turner. The man asked about World War III and nuclear war, and this is what they did. Sad. It's done. <laughs> it's done. The man talking about nuclear war, and they want to dance. They Simply the him. best. <sighs> it's tough, man. You ain't getting shit. Move. All fish tested from Michigan rivers contain forever chemical chemicals. You know, they don't talk about, you know, the, the, uh, the train that derailed in Detroit. Yeah. The one in Ohio, there's been over 40 trains in the last year that has derailed in Washington alone. Washington state. Yes. 40 trains has derailed, but they don't talk about it. Obviously they said over a thousand derail a year. The infrastructure is terrible. Or what, what kind of trains were these in Washington? It's just random trains. It's not saying they're hazardous. It's not saying they're chemicals. It's just trains in general. It might be covering, carrying any some type of uh, it might be uh, might be someone delivering Amazon stuff. You know so, they have out there in California. They've been stealing out the trains. I said I didn't want to get on the plane going back to North Carolina yeah. because there's been a lot of plane crashes. Yeah. Now the damn trains are crashing. <laughs> so when I bus. talk about getting on the bus, there's gonna be a whole bunch of bus crashes on the roads too. <laughs> I doubt it. It's gonna take four days to get there. On it's the better bus. safe than sorry. Ain't it? <laughs> get that food. We want our money back, bruh. They just sent another. I'm gonna talk about it. People are done. You know what was trending today? F Ukraine. People are done. This, this is why you had Zelensky come out and say, "Hey, you guys shouldn't be angry about the money we're getting because if we fight and beat Russia, it'll stop him from taking over Eastern Europe and possibly coming to take over the West. He's trying to use the whole scare tactic. We have to stop them here or he's going to... But he already said he don't want to expand. He just get out, get NATO out of Ukraine. That's all he want. But he's talking about going to go meet up with President uh, with uh, China's president too. Well, uh, the Chinese president said he wants peace. But they said that you're not, you're not, the CIA director, not CIA director, what's his name? Uh, Blinken, Anthony Blinken. He said... That China is thinking about giving weapons to Russia, or what, what they call uh, a lethal aid. <laughs> That's some that, that that is some double. That is news speak like crazy. Just to zoom in on the word lethal, lethal aid, lethal support. It's like these word weapons. <laughs> what you saying? <laughs> I know my loan for getting this money gone, so it's done. I can't drink. Oh yeah, they don't give that to Ukraine. Like the Mexican dude said to us in the comments, <laughs> he said they give me your reparations to Ukraine. Good luck. <laughs> then he had the he had the two laughing emojis in the bag. Yeah, <laughs> he ran off with your bag. All right, this is a guy. This is the uh, his name is Vivek. I forgot how he says his name. He's running for president. The Indian guy. Uh, he was asked, "What's the first thing?" He was asked about his priorities, and it says here the first thing he says is increasing increasing immigration. Why would white people vote for him? 
Well, because he's also teaching the whole American dream thing. And it don't matter. He's pushing immigration. Well, they'll, they'll vote for him if he's able to look. No, they won't. If he's if, look, it's, it's all talking points. If you speak against quote unquote wokeness, to say word. That's wokeness. Talking mm-hmm. about allowing more immigration in. That's no, no, no. wokeness. See, they painted woke as so, uh, social issues like uh, racism, sexism, not winning. transgender, LGBTQ. That's woke now. He's not winning. Oh, I'm not, he's not winning. I know that part. But hey, you got a shot. As long as you say the right words to him. He ain't saying the right words. They, they, all, they gotta, all you got to do is talk to him nice. That's it. Oh, come on. Don't start this. Don't stop till you get enough. <laughs> Uh, please come on, come on, come on. Yeah, it's buffering because they know it's some bullshit that's about to be said. I gotta clean, I gotta clean this cachet. Come on. Load, load, load. Are right, we good now? Let me play this. Come on, thing quickly, please. Wasting people's time. Definitely wasting points. Mine. Huh? Definitely wasting mine. <laughs> Tell audiences as you embark from here on this campaign. I think we need to put merit back into America in every sphere of our lives. I mean, merit who in who gets into this country. Let's start with that. OK, I think more people like my parents can be a good thing for this country. But it, people whose first act of entering this country as a law breaking one, we should say a hard no to that. Not just who gets in, but also who gets ahead. Decimating affirmative action. It has been a national cancer. One of my top priorities will be to end affirmative action in every sphere of American life. And it's not just meritocracy and who gets ahead. Ending affirmative action. Yes. I mean, our whole government is based on that idea. Well, the funny thing, Tucker, is this would be easy, an easy thing for president to do. Lyndon Johnson issued an executive order that requires anyone who does business with the U.S. government, that covers over 20% of the U.S. workforce, to adopt race-based quota systems. Any Republican president since Lyndon Johnson could have taken a pen and crossed that out. We haven't done it yet. I think that's the kind of courage we're going to need to muster yes. to go after these sacred cows from woke religion in the form of affirmative action to this new climate religion, which is completely shackling the American economy and culture. We need to take the most sacred cows of these alternative secular religions. And I'm sorry to say this, take them to the slaughterhouse, because that's what, what it's going to take for this national revival where we stop apologizing for what it means to be American. I'm all for putting America first, but in order to put America first, we have to first rediscover what America is. And to me, those are these basic rules of the road that set this nation into motion from meritocracy to free speech to self-governance over aristocracy. People, You know, it's always funny to me when you catch these Asians, Indians and stuff that come over to America and completely dismiss, at least publicly, their national, their, their natural or, origin. They always just cling on to American. It's, it's sad. You're going to another person's kingdom. <laughs> to try to rule it. It's, and it's not just about, you want to change the rules to benefit, not even change the rules. You want to ingratiate yourself and integrate with that society instead of your own. I can't, my lineage was born here. <laughs> y'all this, got to, y'all got, what, you came here. You didn't, like, you got all this education now, your success. You haven't even thought about going back to your country. Exactly. Y'all supposed to come over here, use the hell out of America, get your shit up, and then go back to your country and make it better. The problem is y'all fall in love with the uh, West. You I, mean, the I want to use the biblical term. They fall in love with the whore. Yeah, the wine of the whore. Yeah, they drink the wine and it just they, it's, it, they're just done. They're drunk. They're drunk on the wine of the whore, and they come over here. They they abandon their religions, their customs, their culture. Dismiss it, disrespect it. The stuff I've heard people that leave these uh, Middle Eastern countries or Asian countries and talk bad about their, their religion like Islam or Buddhism and speak ill of the government and the people's culture there in favor of the Western culture knowing what it did to their country. Keep in mind, this man is Indian. We know what Britain did in Indian. We know Indian. India. Everything he kept referencing was to animals. <laughs> they love a good late night That's with an animal. He said sacred, sacred animals like Y'all worship cows and it's like they don't just uh, they don't only worship them. It's crazy. They like to lay down with them too. It's just crazy how you come to another person's kingdom and you ingratiate yourself. You don't even, you don't even think about the possibility of making your king. It, I don't know. I don't know. It is what it is. This is Nikki Haley. This woman that's not in her prime anymore. Now keep in mind, Nikki Haley said, "Uh, 
Joe and Kamala even say America's racist. Take it from me, the first minority female governor in history. America is not racist country. Let's see. Say America's racist. Nothing could be further from the truth. The American people know better. My immigrant parents know better. And take it from me, the first minority female governor in history, America is not a racist country. Now, this is how this how technology works. She called herself Nikki Haley. You don't know what her real name is? It's a name she don't use because it's too ethnic. Her name is Nimrata. Nikki Haley. You wanna know why you don't go by your first name? Because it sounds too un-American. It sounds too non-Western. So you call yourself Nikki. So that shows that America is racist. racist. If you because... walk around calling yourself Nimarata Haley Nimarata Haley, you might, you might not want one. But Nikki Haley, <laughs> these people crazy. You ain't even go by your real name. That's like when the uh the day these black women LaQuisha. Yeah. Uh Give me a. They normally it's a. It's normally a subtle middle name. Laquisha Nicole yeah. Brown. They'll say Nicole, Nicole Brown. Brown. Yeah. No, your fucking name is Laquisha. <laughs> he says. And this is what I was talking about earlier. Uh, Mar Marjorie Taylor Greene. I'm not even gonna play the video because it's acting up. It says I know a ton of white people that are are a lazy and sorry and probably worse than black people I know. <laughs> is that a sign that MTG is a subconscious bias towards black people, or is she just flat out racist? So she was saying how. Uh, she was making an argument. I know white people who have these attributes even more than I know black people. And so, so you're attributing those attributes to black people when you say that. <laughs> so you're just not saying that different what they're saying. You'd be saying. Saying the same thing. You're saying the same thing. Just trying to make yourself seem less uh, outwardly open with it, but it's still pretty open if you ask me. She's trying to be woke. See what woke happened? What happened to you trying to be woke? <laughs> he not winning, Duke. Done. <laughs> Don't be Duke. <laughs> it's not a waste, Duke. Front, uh, front B Travis. Travis canceling chicken but refused to cancel Nike and support FUBU. <laughs> Don't listen to the conflicted ass. He said what? He said you you were you were canceling the chicken, the company the performers work with, but you won't cancel Nike in favor of FUBU. <laughs> Nike ain't doing nothing to me. Oh, here you go. What did, what what did, did Nike do to me? Do to what did it do? What did the chicken company do to you? They're they are uh affecting this black farmer. Well, Nike has done some stuff to black people. They Who? affected Kyrie Irving. Out Kyrie. Harry Irving is a millionaire who can fend for himself. Okay. This black farmer out here going through the shit, the man about to cry. Okay. You know how hard it is. <laughs> this man about to cry. Okay. It's a difference. Okay. Wasn't Vladimir Zelensky a former comedian, so he got jokes? Hey, Nikki, you so no. fine. <laughs> hey, you so Nikki, fine, you, you blew so my fine. mind. Hey, Nikki. Hey, hey, hey. hey you Nikki. know where you got that from. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. Let's just be honest. We bring it on. Look, we watch. We Niggas all watch watching movies. Bring it on. We definitely watch. Sure them. did. But uh, that's when we thought uh, uh, Gabriel was Gabriel. But then we came to find out that Gabriel uh, Gabriel is actually Gabriel. Gabriel. Yeah, it is what it is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's a comedian. He's a uh, actor. We know what it is. It's all. It's a game they playing. They run a game on us. But hey, Nikki, you so fine. Look, it's stuck in your head now. You didn't got it stuck in his head now. Right, let's move on. I think George was in that movie, Bring It On. He was an extra on the set. <laughs> New York City. He was with the, what was it called? What was the black? No, he was with the white. They're definitely uh, with the white team, definitely. Sorry, George, I got to be honest. You, you definitely with the bunny. He was team. not throwing the sisters up in the air, trying to see. <laughs> NYC Mayor Eric Adams decries remote work. You can't stay home in your pajamas all day. Y'all been trying for the past, what, year? They're not going back. They're not going back. They're not going back. <laughs> they will quit their job if you try sure to will. <laughs> So you might as well just hang it up. You do. Matter of fact, I had uh, there I was do? an employee. He said uh, his daughter quit her T-Mobile job, like the corporate part, yeah. because they said get back to work. And she just found another. Uh, went to a, a Sprint or somewhere else where she could be at home all day. That yeah. white one was like, "Fuck that!" You done goof. You gave them. You gave them the ability to make more money at yeah. home. It's like I get to be. I get to be at home. My husband waiting for with me. With my kids. When my kids gonna be at school. My husband here. My, I, can, I can tell my husband you can pop in around lunchtime. I can work at my own hours. Yeah. I'm pretty much an entrepreneur. I can work at my own hours. That woman said, "No, I ain't going back. I like this life. 
I my life, my life, my life. Or right. uh, uh, the Clark sisters, I like <laughs> living this kind of life. <laughs> living this <story. laughs> I'm living a blessed life. <laughs> uh, US Less Re- than highly favored. <laughs> U.S. Ready's new $2 billion aid package for Ukraine. Aid is intended to finance contracts with uh, lagging delivery dates. White House says sweeping new sanctions are also planned. The uh, U.S. will send Ukraine another $2 billion in security. I think it's even more. I think it's $10 billion, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan said Thursday night, uh, the package to be issued under their Ukraine Security Assistance Initiative will build on previous efforts to aid Ukraine defenses against Russia. Sullivan confirmed a new assistance during the CNN town hall with U.S. agency for in, uh, International Development Administrator Samantha Power. Welfare boy. <laughs> That's welfare, ain't it? <laughs> They're welfare queens. Yeah. Ukraine well, is a welfare queen. Well, maybe they're welfare kings because he's giving it to the president and his wife going on $40,000 shopping trips, by the way. That got exposed. That's just this like you know, taking a, her going off and doing 40000 uh shopping sprees. It's like somebody getting food stamps and buying fucking lobster. Steak, steak and lobster, yeah. What's the difference? <laughs> Keep buying but, a steak and lobster. But she buying, they buying more than steak and lobster. <laughs> they buying steak, lobster. They buying the most expensive uh, wines and stuff. They going uh, all Well, out. what they don't sell. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we ain't going to talk about that. food stamps, boy. Seven That's food stamps. <laughs> all right, let me show this. You asked to support many, Ukrainian many, many, pensions. In the 90s. In the 90s. Huh? In the nineties, it was uh, how many books? Yeah, how many books you got? <laughs> For much needed humanitarian assistance, as well as food, water, medicine, shelter, and other aid to Ukrainians displaced by Russia's war, and provide aid for those seeking refuge in other countries from Ukraine. <clears throat> it's also going to help schools and hospitals open. It's going to allow pensions and social support to be paid to the Ukrainian people, so they have something, something in their pocket. So, so we are now we're now paying the pensions and social security of Ukrainians. Well, those of us who have a job <laughs> are paid <paying> for. <laughs> so now you're going to be funding Ukraine society. So Pretty their, much. their elders. Shit, I'm about ready to draw, get my damn, uh, draw my damn shit. Yeah. Just call it a day. They're giving it away. Give out, get, uh, get a whole bunch of Capital One cars. Get draw all the damn money off of it and go South America. Be done with this shit. Oh, 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 oh. you said South America. <laughs> so now y'all know I've been asking him for years. Well, y'all don't even know. I've been asking him for years if he could leave the country, where would he go? He never would say. Because I would say, well, you wouldn't go to Africa? He wouldn't answer. Now you, you finally admit it, it'll be South America. The second biggest population of black people is in South America. It's Africa. What are you talking about? The second biggest population of black people outside of Africa is in South America. What did I do anything? I'm going where black people are. It's black people it's more in uh, Africa. I don't deal with those niggas. Oh, how you know you don't deal with the other ones? <clears throat> we don't sit. We don't sit too long with one another before shit starts shaking. So <laughs> shit starts shaking. All right, go over there and get your ass whooped. By who? Either one. The uh, Colombians gonna be doing that. Uh, what's that dance? That's that. I ain't that say I was going to be doing. Or oh, Brazil, you gonna be on the wall with them, <laughs> climbing over the wall That's with fucked them up. in the slum. I'm just being wow. honest. Wow, they, they, they try to hide them during the Olympics. No, 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 no. Don't try to speak up for them now. What you mean? I was speaking up for them when I said something. No, you laughed. You did a <laughs> nah, a little chuckle that. with it. No, that ain't you funny. Add, you adding to it. They were like, "We here, <laughs> we are here. Y'all not gonna make us invisible. We are here in this country too." They definitely was making sure you see them. <laughs> making sure you see them. That's how you do it, though. Because that's what niggas do. You're not just going to dismiss us like we invisible. We ain't here. We here. Yeah. Y'all notice all these facilities burning? Now, last year, it was food plants and and all that stuff. This year, it's been train derailments and uh, power, power boxes. Things been shot up last year as well. Now, you got... Uh, lumber facilities and Florida has had like three factory three factories uh get burned down I'm not crazy I know I know that f- fires and train derailments and that stuff is it happens normal just because they don't make the news I mean it didn't happen You're but okay. I also know when they get put in the news there's a reason why they're putting it in the news mm. so why are they so this stuff always been happening so why are they covering it more now um I don't know. 
I think they I well you can say that they're trying to set you up. They're trying to set you up for letting you know there's going to be a lot of changes, a lot of shortages, things that you used to have, things that you're accustomed to is no longer going to be available to you. So getting you used to the mindset of there being a shortage of uh of shortage goods. in America. So getting you so showing you that even though it might not be the truth, they're showing you that this is happening. Yeah. So when they tell you oh it's less food, oh you remember there was 30 factories that burned down last year. Yeah. You go oh yeah, that's why. And instead it's not even it's not true it didn't happen. Let me show this. Yeah. Come on, can go to here? We lagging like crazy right now, I can tell. All right. So this is a massive plumes of smoke seen in the skies of Brooklyn following the fire, large fire at the lumber facility in Wilmings, Williamsburg, New York. So you got this one. This is a uh, being uh, being on news, large explosion at metals plum making plant in Bedford, Ohio reports of multiple victims. <sighs> so lumber, metals, power systems, mm. train derailments with chemicals. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> Chicken farms being blown up. Yeah. Oh yeah. I'm gonna, since we're talking about this, this is the picture Travis took. This does it now. This is it. When now, I was outside, this is a picture. I hope y'all can see it right. This is a picture of the sky. You walking outside. I was walking my dog. You looked up. And I said, "What the hell?" Now you took pictures. Now <laughs> that's regular stars. These are stars. What the hell is these? Now zoom in. This is far as I can. hold on. What the hell is that? What is that? It's two. What is that? Now is that. The, the spy balloons again, or like, what is that? I don't know what it is. <laughs> I mean, All I know is when I saw it, I started repenting. Like, Lord, forgive me. Lord, forgive me. When I first saw it, I thought maybe it's just stars and it's a reflection of something. Maybe it's a plane. It there ain't no plane. plane. Those ain't no stars. It ain't no plane. Like, those are stars. Obviously. Well, hold on. <laughs> you zoom in close. Don't, I don't yeah, know what that. these two are here is. So, there's some, some shit going on in the skies. Once again, do they just got some 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 stuff flying in the skies to scare people and get people in this fear mode? Well, it was prophesied that they, they are going to come back. On well, that too. But are they just trying to make us think that's what it is? Alright, let me... This is the last time I'm going to try this. Uh, still not working. That's froze right now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> George said, "Travis, get your ass in the Greyhound." <laughs> uh, says, "You know, like we know." Uh, what I'm saying, this is un-American. These packages of Ukraine, man. I'm I'm Ukrainian. Where my damn a <laughs> George? You ain't Ukrainian. They ain't giving you nothing. Ukraine not spending it fast enough. They not stockpiling weapons. They stockpiling bombs. Well, George calling himself Ukrainian because he like being with Ukrainian. <laughs> Virginia, hey, you could have got you one of them brides. Remember those, when the war first started, there was rumors that these women were leaving the country and they were just going to all these countries and dudes were purchasing wives from Ukraine. Regina says, have you guys been watching Last of Us? If yes, yes. Deco episode five with the two brothers. I'm still disgusted. Uh, episode five. With the two brothers. Oh, Harry, uh, Henry. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When he had to shoot his brother because he got uh, bit. Yeah. Um. I knew, well, I, I played the uh, the video game. I didn't read, there was a book it's based off of and I knew that, it, I, I'm, I'm surprised they made him deaf. I'm surprised by that. But when they, uh, when they made him the villain, or not the villain, I guess you said, uh, what do you call it? A complicated character. Wait, what's on you? No. Oh my bad. They made him a complicated character. I didn't. It didn't really go out that way. I didn't expect it to go that way. <laughs> I want to say it that way. He, he did what he had to do. I just said it like that. I'm surprised. I don't know why he. I don't know why 
uh, what's her name? Uh, what's the girl name? The little white girl in the show. The good white girl. She probably should. She should have told him immediately. Well, she thought that her blood could save him because you know that's what she's going there for. If in the run, test is on her blood and making to a vaccine for everybody. Well, yeah, and that whole blood saving him thing. That's supposed to be the pure blood saving the little <laughs> little Negro. If, if I put this pure blood, he, it may save him from the virus. But yeah, it's a good show though. It's definitely a good show. Are those satellites or the flooded balloon? The Clinton death <laughs> death tied to Epstein and any? Come on, man! And is another come on, man? Exactly. We're gonna talk about that too. Um. Joyce are trying to eventually force us to volunteer to go into camps to have a promise of needs provided. They want you to be happy with nothing. Travis will recruit us <laughs> to be his new Filipino slaves. <laughs> Joyce, them UFOs, Virginia, Travis kind, because they uh, look uneventful like the two don't research. <laughs> he said they don't. <laughs> they look boring. <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, uh, Let's move on to the next topic. They born till they come down here. Yeah, they they born when they that far away. I want to see what you're gonna say when they come down here. <laughs> Deaths, uh, death of shot, death of shot Clinton A with Epstein ties found tied to tree ruled suicide despite no gun at scene. That was the initial story. It's attached to what name? <laughs> Don't say the name. The name. The name. <laughs> so apparently they found a dude tied with a rope around his neck, a tension cord around his neck, and a gunshot wound to the chest. But the shotgun, at, at first, they said there was no gun there, right? They didn't find a gun. And it was like, what? How do you shoot yourself and hang yourself at the same time? Did you put a rope around your neck, shoot yourself, and then let yourself drop? And where the gun at? The birds carried it off. So this this story came out first, and it was obvious. You know what everybody was saying? Oh, another another Clinton uh, Arkansas body count. This is another one. And then they hurry up and put this out, gave them more information to police. The police in Arkansas ruled it a suicide, by the way. I'm going to say that again. The police in Arkansas ruled it a suicide. Soon after that article was released that there was no oh. gun found, they put this out. Exclusive. Daily Mail. Shotgun was found near the body of Clinton aide linked to Jeffrey Epstein. He texted his wife, found a perfect place for a nap before blasting his chest and falling from the bench with an electrical cord tied around his neck. Now, what's the point of the electrical cord if you're shooting yourself? <laughs> you ain't gonna say nothing about this. So, uh, so the NOI and Clinton are untouchable to you. <laughs> Clinton. Okay, let's scroll down. Uh go up right quick. And more details of how the cops now believe Mark Middleton killed himself have been released. Papers released earlier by Perry County Sheriff of Sheriff Scott Montgomery said deputies who were called to the uh, Hefner Ranch in Perryville and now west of Little Rock after an abandoned BMW SUV was found there specifically said there was no gun in the car. Okay, but now a further set of papers have been released to DailyMail.com that says that the weapon, a Stroger 12 gauge coach gun, was found on the ground 30 feet from the Middleton's body. So this is what they want you to believe. I'm not going to read the rest of this. I'm going to read this next paragraph, but we they know. want to say that he shot himself and because of the angle of the gun, it flew 30 feet away from him. <laughs> <laughs> So it wasn't in the near position. It was 30 feet. Okay. In a new pa- in the new paper, Sergeant Keenan Carter gives a detailed explanation of how he believes Middleton, an aide who signed the pedophile, who signed pedophile at Jeffrey Epstein into the White House several times into 17 times, I think, to be exact, during Bill Clinton's presidency, took great lengths uh, to ensure his suicide bid was successful. After writing a text to his wife saying he had found a great a perfect place for in the um, nap in the sun. Uh, he tied an electrical cord around his neck and then shot himself. So if the blast didn't kill him, the wire would, the wire would when he fell. 
In the note to his wife, Rhea Middleton said, going to rest for a while, he added, you are a great mom and wife, babe. Please be happy today and get you some sun. It will make you feel better. I love you. He signed off on the text with a heart emoji. Cardi and Middleton 59, whatever, whatever. He stood on top of the bench and tied one end of the essential cord to the largest limb with a tree, da, da, da. It's believed that when he took the firearm and placed the barrel against his chest and then reached out with his left hand and placed his first finger on the first trigger. It's believed he pulled a trigger on the firearm casing it to discard, discharge, discharge the strike him in the chest, and then he fell from the bench, causing the extension cord to become tight, cutting off his breathing. It's said as reported the gun landed so far from Middleton's body due to the recoil from the discharge and the height of the angle of the ground. What's he gonna say? Oh God, you know, <clears throat> it's a tragedy what happened to him. <laughs> it's a tragedy. It just so happened he was the man who brought the man who signed in for Epstein to get into Clinton's White House killed himself. Well, white men do have a high rate of suicide, by the way. <laughs> yeah, they do. So it's possible, it's believable. It, and, it, and it definitely benefits the Clintons. It benefits, benefits, uh, he's the one that signed Epstein to come to the White House to visit Bill Clinton. Um, if you get him, he give you information. He know more than he, he was ever told he, uh, had. I think the Clintons liked him. You know, he was beloved by them. Okay. Yeah. He was beloved. All right. <laughs> uh, brain implant startup backed by Bezos and Gates is testing mind controlled computing on humans. Cyt- uh, Cycron. It's part of an emerging crop of companies testing technology in the brain computer interface industry. In a Brooklyn lab stuffed with 3D printers and a makeshift pickleball court, employees at a brain inf- uh, interfer- interface startup called Cycron are working on technology designed to transform daily life for people with paralysis. The a Cycron switch is implanted through a blood vessel that, to allow people with no or very limited physical mobility to operate technology such as sensors and smart home devices using their mind. So far, the nascent technology has been used in three patients in the U.S. and four in Australia. Founded in 2012, Cycron is part of a burgeoning uh, brain-computer interface, or BCI, industry. A BCI is a system that deciphers brain signals and translates them into commands for external technologies. Perhaps the best-known name in the space of Neuralink, uh, thanks to the high-profile and founder Elon Musk, who is also CEO of Tesla, SpaceX, and Twitter. Why do you keep wanting to put something in your brain that connect you to the internet? Plug you directly into the matrix. So instead of you having to associate it with, get into it through your phone or your laptop or your computer. You directly plug your into Your brain it. is already there. Like that show on Mirrors where you could go back and... Uh... Oh, it's funny you brought it up. Oh. It's the next clip. There was a show on Black Mirror where you could look at your memories through an implant through your brain. And look at this. Hi. Wow. What a big guy. Punch. Oh, there he is. Hi. Wow. What a big guy. So, we we never looked at things for what they are. When people used to take pictures, they would look at the picture as it's a picture of themselves in a moment. Kind of a memory. Video the same way. It was a video of a moment, a memory. So now, through this technology they have here, you can now play a moment or a video or a memory in front of you and interact with it. It's getting real. It's getting crazy. So, so if you take a video somewhere, go away for years, come back, you can play this video in that spot, and it will act out that video in that moment. That scene. It will act it out in front of you. So instead of just watching the video on the screen, you get to you're walking in into memory. And this is just the beginning. How how long before you combine the VR, which is what this basically is, VR, and extend this even more, so you can be in a movie. You could already you could be in a movie. The NBA just did a thing at All Star Weekend where they got some new technology that allow fans to be in the game, like in the actual basketball game court. Yeah. 
So they got this new, so they're expanding this VR thing. It didn't go where I think they wanted it to go when they introduced it like 15 years ago, but now it's starting to catch up and it's becoming normal now. So be careful. Be careful what you wish for. Because when I can look at memories, now you can, how long before they can actually just take a memory out of your brain? Not a video, an actual memory. Now you can't lie. Now they can go through your memory and look for something <laughs> to see if you did something or not. And you can't even deny it because in your brain, you remember it. Uh, dang, Trev, you really don't do research. <laughs> George, be quiet. They ain't got nothing to do with research. I know a whole bunch of shit on the Clintons. I'm choosing not to say anything on the Clintons. Duke gave you enough. <laughs> okay. Episode five for me, my first start. <laughs> niggas kill niggas. Nothing to see here. Second was Black Star again ritualized to save white. Well, yeah, he killed his brother to save the white. Yeah. He killed his brother to save the white girl. As a matter of fact, the dude who supposed to be protecting her didn't even do it. It was the other guy who had to kill his own brother to protect him. Yeah. So yeah, that's a good point. That's a good one. <laughs> Imagine ma imaginary cover up, Travis Style. Uh that's definitely a come on man <laughs> King Store, King Time Store. Uh that's been around since the nineties as part of the liquid uh, uh liquid software. They had a story on something like this in Ripple, believe it or not. A person had his own house hooked to uh, interact with his brain chip. Yeah, I do remember hearing that. Um you put these things on your fingertips. And you just think of something and it'll it'll draw something on the screen. It wasn't at the level that it's trying to get to now where you can control a machine next to you or something. But yeah, transhumanism. Exactly. They are getting bigger trying to uh, give you fleshy spiritual abilities. Black Mirror is the home as you young as... <laughs> Black Mirror is the home as you young as like to say. <laughs> so his demons are here to go to Switzerland. And that's why I said you don't do research. <laughs> you think the demons are only going to go to Switzerland? <laughs> People say it's like RoboCop. <laughs> yeah. Once again, they showed you we're going to make you bring yourself into this new technology. I mean, they, they started with the uh, people with limbs missing. So let's just give them some type of machinery to help them walk, give them a hand. That seems like useful. Next thing you know, they're trying to give somebody who has all their limbs, let's put a chip in your brain and put you in a suit so you can turn into Iron Man. <laughs> All right, I think that's the last thing we had to talk about. Well, we got one more. This is the last one. A little quick little story that we ain't surprised by at all. <laughs> Bestiality may be legalized in EU state. Now, this is RT, Russia Today. The practice would no longer be considered a criminal offense according to proposed amendment to Spain's penal code. Zoophilia in Spain may soon become decriminalized after lawmakers finalized the draft of a new uh, penal code amendment to, uh, on Monday. The legislation is part of an animal welfare bill that was provided by the lower house of the Spanish parliament earlier this month and is now waiting final approval in the Senate. The bill was initially introduced and pushed through by Spain's social rights minister, Lone Valera, who was promoted to, who promoted it as seeking to protect the well-being of animals, regardless of whether they are pets or wild animals. The amendment seeks to introduce several changes to the Spanish penal, Spanish penal code, which as of 2015 has treated bestiality as a form of abuse and suggested a three month or one year prison sentence for causing injuries that seriously impair the health and animals for subjecting them to sexual exploitation. If the penal code reform is approved, the previous article will be deleted and replaced by a new one titled crimes against animals. The new law would only introduce punishments uh, to um, animal owners who by any means or procedure include acts of a sexual nature cause an animal to injury that requires veterinary treatment to restore its health. So basically what they're saying is it's only a crime if you have sex with your animal and it hurts them. <laughs> Are we surprised that it's Spain? No. Not surprised at all. We wouldn't be surprised that it's any European country. Yeah. Or Middle East. They country. have a they have a brothel. For animals. That's it. Is that in Germany? I think it's in Germany. So. Sick people, man. Sick people. That's why you got to stay away from them, man. 
You know, you got some sick old black people out here too. What they got in the field? Now hold on, I, niggas do that all the time. What, what what do sick niggas got to do with this? They out here fucking dogs too. <laughs> so the portal, Travis, shake my head. We know George. We it's CERN. We know George. Is that what you want me to say, CERN? Keep a drop. We know that CERN is in Switzerland, George. <laughs> Talk your bums don't do. He told you bums don't do research. Wow, they want the kids and the woman want the German shepherds. Spain is a new Amsterdam. <laughs> they want the kids and and the women want the German shepherds. <laughs> they do. That's why they be walking around here with these big ass dogs. Why are these white women walk around here with these big ass dogs? But even some big ass dogs, bruh. I ain't even gonna lie. Dogs being there handling business. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. All right, I think I don't, we don't kept y'all long enough. This is way longer than it was supposed to be. <laughs> we supposed to be on here for like an hour, hour and a half. <laughs> but, you know, things happen. You know, it is what it is. But anyway, man, what's the last word you want to say to let these people go? Thanks for viewing the channel. I'm surprised this many people showed up. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. You don't got to go home, but you got to get the hell up out oh, of here. That's your new thing now. You're going to be saying that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, thank you all for showing. Thank you all. Make sure you like it on the way out. Be sure to subscribe. I'm definitely going to try to promote this channel more uh, so it can at least get the people saying people to know that it exists because we don't even talk about it till we get suspended. But anyway, please like it, comment, share it if you can. It's going to be on Facebook. We on Twitter. Shout out to y'all, man. All oh, praise to the most high. Dude, talking like we we international. We gonna be here. We gonna be doing it big. This platform, that platform. <laughs> Watch out! New album coming out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. All praise to the Most High. Peace, man.